Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Death Mark 2. Previously, we completed Chapter 4, and now we're on our way to Chapter 5 to solve another case and encounter more ghosts. A few days have passed since the incident at the clock tower. Chaos Hospital is surprisingly empty for midday. Forgive the expression, but the place is basically dead. Mark. From the other side of the hallway, a familiar-looking man is approaching me. Oh, you're approaching me? Next to him is a small girl. Hello, Mr. Yashiki. Sup? Are you also here to visit Diamond, Ita? Yeah, pretty much. She asked me to come with her. Oh, yeah! It's been a while. Been a while, apparently only a few months since we almost all died. Good afternoon. This girl is Suzu Mormia. Though she's but a grade schooler, she's also one of the Mark Bears. Please don't let her die. After our previous case, she's come to idolize Eita and treat him as her older brother, Oni-chan. Eita, why are you te taking Suzu here on a weekday afternoon? She's not skipping school, right? Today is her school's anniversary. Um... I heard the situation from Aita. Mr. Diamond's still asleep because of a spirit's curse, isn't he? Most likely. No way. Her eyes are filled with deep sorrow. Don't you worry, Suzu. Mr. Yashiki and I will definitely save Mr. Diamond, alright? Aita proudly taps his chest while making that claim. I have no idea where that confidence comes from. Despite my skepticism, the display brings a smile back to Suzu's face. Eita. Mister. Can I trust you two? The only guarantee in life is death, kid. That's a little, a little too edgy for uh, a kid. <laughs> we basically shadow the hedgehogging it. Thank you, mister. Anyway, Mr. Yashiki, I'll continue to back you up on your investigation. Ita, about that. Oops, let's save that for later. I've gotta get Suzu back home. I'll go to Kujo Mansion after that. Call me if you need anything. See you later, mister. Ita and Suzu leave after that. Crap, that was my chance to tell him. Following slipping off Kashima's case, I told Moya and showed us the out of the investigation. But Ita wasn't around, so I haven't told him yet. I finish my visit with Daimon and leave the hospital. He's still comatose, showing no sign of leaving Limbo and rejoining the ranks of the conscious. The doctors have yet to identify the root cause of his coma. If it's truly the Depart's curse that's behind his condition, he won't pull out of this so long as the Depart still exists. I drive my car to Konohara Academy. A new notice hasn't been discovered yet. But Mr. Kone asked me to teach a class this afternoon. I enter the classroom and take my place in front of the students. Then I perceive the class like usual. When Konohara first asked me to teach as part of my investigation, I thought it would be an absolute disaster. But surprisingly, I'm doing just fine. On the other hand, the students seem to be doing markedly less fine. The number of fidgeting students I can't focus on class is too large to ignore. Considering some of them also ask me about my investigation, it's obvious what's on their minds. But the part isn't just a fringe rumor anymore. These students have gone from being amused to being terrified. The human heart is a fragile thing. See these kids with their flagging spirits. I know I need to hurry up and close this case. And when it feels like the blink of an eye, class is over. The first time I taught, I felt like time stood still. It's kind of troubling to realize I've now been at long enough that I'm used to it. After school, I start my investigation solo. I think back to my conversation with Doryu and Michio the other day. The part might be someone close to me. In order to narrow it down, I make the rounds, asking teachers and students alike about the people involved in the incident. 
However, my efforts are fruitless, and all I get is a lot of small talk and wasted effort. I attempt to take a different angle to figure out the Depart's true identity and think it over. Hi. The Depart is good at hiding. Let's say they will take the place of someone else. And when they do, they can perfectly duplicate that person's looks, memories, and personality. It'd be the perfect disguise. Nobody could see through that. With that level of deception, the only real chance to know their true identity would probably be once they achieve their goal. So it's either, like I said, it's either two of the student girls. I mean, it could be Mr. Konoe. I don't think so. So far, there's been consistency where, like, the antagonist is not anyone that you can play. Uh, so, at least not directly like that. So in that case, white hair could be the red herring. Um, because we have not played as a teacher whatsoever. So it could be her. I don't know. I think it's either, either of those three, or it's a complete non-character. Which will likely be when they exchange vows with their dear husband. And for me, that would either be death or fate worse than that. So I have to find the answer before then. The thing is, the two girls got cursed. That's why I think like one is the curse giver and one's the curse receiver. One of the two. I glance up and notice that it's already dark out. It's time for the students to leave school. I'm not getting anywhere by blindly hunting for clues. I better go to the infirmary and put together a real plan of action. I find a woman in a white coat waiting inside the infirmary. This is another character from Deathmark. For a moment, I think she's a school nurse, but then I see her face. Still stressed out. Hello, Yashiki. I never would have imagined you'd be a teacher here. I was really shocked when I heard the news from Diamond. Hiro, why are you here? To help you out with the investigation, what else would I be doing here? I don't know if that's how you say that name or not. I'll, I'll find out when I get to the menu. I can, you can have them say their name. I never would have imagined I hear the word help come out of Hiro's mouth. There's gotta be a reason. Let's get out. She's Mandoka Hiro. She wears a white coat, but not because she's a doctor. She was a mark bearer works at a pharma company as a researcher. Making some good money. If I remember correctly, you don't handle paranormal phenomena all that well. Well, true. I mean, after all the suffering I was put through before, how could I be expected to like it? So why are you here then? Jeez, you're so annoying. I have my own reasons, all right. She's rather intelligent, but Hiro also has quite the cowardly streak. However, there are times when her curiosity gets the better of her, and she ends up poking her nose into bizarre incidents. Call it a test of courage, I suppose. That's why she's here. To tell you the truth, I'm here because Daimon asked. In the event that something would happen to him, he asked that I come help you in his stead. As I'm here, using up my paid leave, you're gonna die! I appreciate you taking your obligation to Daimon seriously, but... This case is extremely dangerous. There have been a lot of casualties already. Oh, come now. Don't patronize me. I'm fully aware of the dangerous present. Then why are you... Because I want to save Daimon. Simple as that. They're my friends too, not just yours. Come on, the investigation. Daimon apprised me of the situation. A spirit known as the party is who's known as just targeting people and then has other spirits kill them, correct? Yeah, and has been pretty successful. You have a number of victims already. That spirit seems to have some human tendencies, eh? They behave a bit like a serial killer. I feel like you've been made more attractive this time. Somehow, like, right? It's been a while since I got to your chapters in the previous game, but I feel like... a little bit more. The Depart is different from any other spirit I've encountered so far. They're cunning and they possess the ability to pass themselves off as a human and hide within the school. And I've also heard they're obsessed with you, no? You sure have a strong connection with spirits, Yashiki. Hey, that's just me. I guess so. I wonder if that's just another aspect of my lineage. Like the way I seem to be able to see paranormal phenomena that others can't. And that paranormal phenomena always wants to marry me. Which is a good thing. Well then, shall we proceed with the investigation? Wait a minute, Hero. I'm going to investigate alone. I don't want to get you involved in this. 
Say what? You're just gonna disregard my feelings? I don't get a say in the matter? Hero. Didn't you understand what I told you before? You aren't the only one who feels frustrated about what happened to Diamond. So you better ditch that weird I'm the only one who can carry this burden. I'll sacrifice myself mindset. It really gets on my nerves. But... I'll just take matters into my own hands if you keep insisting that I stay out of this. Just give it up. I try to smile Brian's her features. I don't think I'm gonna win a war of wits against her. Moving on to your investigation. I've heard there's no new notice yet. As of this moment, that is correct. I have a feeling one will arrive soon, though. Let's go check the faculty room. You have a sixth sense or something? I guess you can call it that. I have a feeling the department wants me, their dear husband, to continue pursuing this case. If my hunch is right, that means that they'll be more likely to issue a notice while I'm here at the school. A pharmaceutical researcher. She's been friends with the protagonist since he saved her life during a bizarre case. A person who hates things unexplainable by logic. She's willing to take risks for her life to save her curiosity. So her strength is 8, intelligence is much higher than ours. Dexterity is still higher. Spiritual power is lower. And you have a calculator. When I get to the room, one of the teachers informs me that Mr. Kono is away at the moment. Which unfortunately means I'm going to have to ask Sakamoto. So the only problem is we really don't know much about you. So that can I really mean you are the departed or you're absolutely not the departed? Because we just don't have enough evidence to go on you either way. Or rule you out. Goodness gracious, you again. Sakamoto's cold tone of voice make it apparent that she finds his meaning just as unfortunate as I. But she has rabbits on her, and rabbits are usually a positive thing. Unless you're going for the Holy Grail. What's your business here? I have work to do. Or it's that one blood sea anime. Or it's Ray Zero. As a new notice from the departed arrived. Notice. Oh, now that you mention it, I did get a report of something like that earlier. What about it? What are you being so nonchalant for? Why didn't you tell me sooner? I believe I've made my position quite clear. I find this investigation of yours to be, at best, a pointless waste of time. Sakamoto shoots a wivering glare in my direction, looking like she just swallowed a bug. She's usually pretty open about her dislike of me, but she's taking it to another level today. I got a report from the dorm manager the other day. She informed me that you took Doryu and Kinukawa out and made them violate their curfew. The headmaster might have ordered me to let your absurd behavior slide, but this is unacceptable. And that's why she's being particularly hostile toward me today. I didn't make those girls break curfew. But I can see how it skewed that way in Sakamoto's mind, and I doubt my explanation would change much. Those notices are pranks. It's a mere coincidence that the students disappeared when the notices were issued. The departed ghost is supernatural. It's all a bunch of ludicrous nonsense. But see, the thing is, the departed wants you to succeed, right? Sakamoto always like gets in your way. I think a man like you has sold the good name of teachers just to investigate this rubbish. Sakamoto's practically got steam coming out of her ears. I wonder what I can do to calm her down. Cooperate with me. I don't care if you believe in the part or not, but I'm only here because Mr. Konoe hired me. And I'm trying to do the job my client, your boss, asked me to. Can you at least cooperate? <sighs> Where's the new notice? I don't have it with me. I told the student to pick it up to throw it away. You told him to do what now? Which student was it? Kakuta from the disciplinary community. He found it when patrolling the school. What does he look like? He's a strapping, well-built boy. He's in the karate club. Hmm. 
Oh my, look at the time. I have to go now, I have a meeting. Before I could even protest, Sakamoto has already left the room. Other teachers are following suit. Well, she's clearly not a fan of yours, Yashiki. Though you pretty much earned that treatment for hitting on high school students. Hey! It's okay. It's, no, it's true. That's not what happened. Stop making things weird. I only like ghosts. Legal age ghosts. Looks like we're going to have to put in some effort to find this Kakuto boy. I mean, we might stumble upon him simply by stopping to talk to each stout student we see on the way. But it'd be nice if we had a bit more information to go on. More information. Toyo and Michiho might know him. Sakamoto's obviously going to be keeping a close eye on my contact with those two, but I can't let that interfere with my work. Toyo is organizing documents in the student council room. Possible but evil person? Oh, Mr. Yashiki. Thank you again for your help. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry. Do you know Kakuta? I've heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. I know him. He's in 2C. Of course. How would you try looking for him in his classroom? Got it. Thanks. The school's getting strange these days. I know, right? It smells musty here. It's because of the departed? Actually, it is. I've heard there's an outbreak of mold somewhere in the school. Yeah, it's just imagine that makes my skin itchy. Hey, well, let's go home. Yeah. So here's one thing. Couple leave the area. We see a moldy mushroom fungus covered body at the very start of the game. And I don't remember if we saw the hair color. Now, everyone has black hair for the most part. If we go with the fact that the girl with the white hair only got her hair turned white because of the curse. But she might have looked more like, uh, what's her name? With the facial tattoo thing going on. Or Sakamoto. I'm trying to remember, because it's, you know, been hours. But I f think there's like a body somewhere in the school. And it's just rotting away. And hence that musty smell is spectrally spreading everywhere. Hey. Oh, hello there. I caught a paying lady in the courtyard earlier. Want to watch some butterflies together? Sorry, but I'm in a hurry now. Do you know Kakuta? I've heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary community. And supposedly he doesn't fly so good. Oh, I saw him going to the third floor just now. What business do you have of that karate guy, though? Is a new notice targeting the karate kid or something? I don't know yet, but thanks for the info. I saw a big guy going to the back of the hallway earlier. It's probably Kakuta from second year. I wonder what he's up to. Huh. Huh. Yeah, you're a big guy. There's a big whoop guy standing over there. He looks pretty strapping. Are you Kakuta? Who's? Yes, the name is Shinichi Kakuta. Where's the departs known us? I'm hoping you haven't thrown it away already. No, I still haven't. The Sakamono told me to trash it, but... I felt like I should show it to you since you're investigating them. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you should thank Doryu and Kinokawa. They've been asking everyone to pitch in and help you out. He pulls out the Departed's notice and hands it to me. If that's it, I'll be heading to my classroom. Feel free to come by 2C if you still need anything. I'll be at school for a while. Kakura then walks off. I quickly scan the new notice. It has all the hallmarks of the previous notices, an accordion folded piece of paper with eerie handprints on it. This is what a notice looks like, eh? 
<laughs> it's really giving off the horror vibes. Hurry up and check it out, come on. Dear Hooligan, Kokori will kill you tonight. I'm watching Hiding in the School. Your beloved to depart. I have already an idea what this probably is. Could be memorable in the early chapters as an NPC. Huh. The next victim is Hooligan, and the spirit is Kokori. So by Hooligan, they mean those boorish fug types, right? Yeah, so fu So I think we should try and gather information that would lead us to the identity of these two things. Asking the remaining students would probably be more fruitful than asking the teachers. The faculty doesn't seem so cooperative. Yeah, and the... Maybe that student council girl will tell you. I mean, she actually appears to be trying to help you. Also, I'd like to hear more from that Kakuta kid. Yeah. What's with you? Yeah, come on, give me more work to work with than that. This is your operation here. Don't make me handle everything alone. Oh, uh, okay. As much as I want to point out that she's cut me off every time I've tried to speak, I hold my tongue. Besides, Hiro's plan of attack is basically what I su would have suggested. We better start asking around about Hooligan and Kokuri. Well, what's her name usually introduced the actual ghost, so we'll go talk to her first. But once again, the one that introduces the ghost is usually the killer in this series. But it could just be Red Herring. Did you find Kakuta? Yes, thank you. I'm happy that I could help. So what do you want to talk about? Actually, we found a new notice. Whoa, so and everyone's finally here, huh? Show me! I showed Michio the Depard's notice. Heh, <laughs> so the next spirit's Kakuri. Well, Kakuri usually refers to that old fortune-telling technique, but I'm sure you already know about that, right? Um, no. Let me explain it to you then. Kakuri is a fortune telling technique that uses a coin and a piece of paper. You summon a spirit named Kakuri and ask him some questions. It can be dangerous since you're dealing with a spirit after all. There are some people who get a big scare out of it. But the Kakuri is mentioned in the notice as a ghost, not the fortune telling technique. So Kakuri is both the name of the technique and the summoned spirit, and the rumors are referring to the spirit. Can you tell me more about Michiho? Sure, why not? That reminds me, Hime and I were called by Miss Sakamoto this afternoon. Do you know what she said? Don't get too close to Mr. Yashiki, he doesn't belong here. Oh, okay. No, sorry, I shouldn't have talked to you. She's probably gonna give you a lecture. You actually look like the OOK -okay meme. Like, it's the face. It's literally the same face. Look it up. OOK. -okay. Oh, don't worry about it. You're my lifesaver and you're hunting down to depart like I am. Kukuri. It's about the Kukuri in the notice. I have a feeling it might be referring to Mr. Kukuri. Wow, this one just named that. There's a rumor like that as at Konohara Academy. Gosho. Kukuri Oji-san. Kukuri Oji-san. Have you ever gone to the corridor on the second floor? Of course not, that place is restricted. Do you know why? Centipedes. Oh, that's a bad idea. It's because of the Kokuri Shrine. Not because centipedes themselves are scary. It's because of what they represent in Eastern uh, stuff. That place is cursed. Like, they're just never a good thing. I'm not lying, it's the truth. I've even heard stories about it. Hey, what's up? I'm a hand. One rainy day, some delinquents were hanging out on the second floor's corridor. They were kind of notorious. They were getting in fights on a daily basis. There were even rumors that they were into drugs. I guess they must have been bored. So they were messing around with the shrine as a dare, all laughing with their stupid faces. They were kicking the shrine and scribbling on it, all sorts of things. One of them even put out a cigarette on it. The wind in the rain got stronger. The delinquents were about to head back inside. At that moment, they heard a voice mixed with the wind. They 
They turned toward the old shrine, the source of the voice shrieking someone must have been playing a prank on them. Except they were the only ones in the corridor. Obviously they thought they were just imagining things. Those delinquents looked at each other and ran away from the corridor as fast as they could. But that night, they tripped down the stairs. One well, of the delinquents, the one who snuffed out the cigarette on the shrine, felt a pain in his ear. Oh god, centipedes came out of the ear. He felt a strange sensation when he touched his ear. It was dry and rough. It was weird, like there was something in his ear. Terrified, he went to go check himself in the mirror. This is gonna be bad. Oh no, it's mushrooms. It's not any better, but... Mushrooms are growing from his ear. Folded cap mushrooms that look like my take. Well, the thing at the beginning was mushroom fiend. The mushrooms continued to spread. From his ear to his neck, his cheeks and his chin. The delinquent shrinked and then... He called an ambulance. He got himself checked at the hospital. They found no trace of mushrooms. But his ear had a really bad infection. The skin was running away, so they had to cut his ear off. He almost got the last of us. When a teacher heard this story, they said it's the curse of Kokuri's shrine. That voice must have been Mr. Kokuri's, and that was his work. The rumors say Mr. Kokuri is the apparition of a priest who haunts a shrine. And that was the rumor. That was the rumor about Mr. Kokuri. So please stay away from the shrine in the second floor's corridor. If you're cursed by the mushrooms, your lovely face will be ruined. Is Mr. Kokuri the name of the shrine? Correct. It's called Mr. Kokuri because the shrine has a mysterious voice. No one knows what Mr. Kokuri looks like, as they've only heard his voice. Creepy, isn't it? Hooligan. Hooligan? Hmm. I can't think of anyone. Maybe Izumi, I guess? But he's dead already. By the way, Mr. Yashiki, I've never seen the person beside you. Is she a doctor like Mr. Diamond? Oh god, you're marked! I'm a researcher, not a doctor, though I do also deal with the health of living beings as part of my job. So, so far we've met all three of the potential killers. Oh, I see. An idol and a female scientist, huh? You sure have some amazing and gorgeous assistants. By the way, which one do you prefer? They're both dependable in their own ways. I as the stamina, Hero as the intelligence. That's not what I mean. <laughs> oh well, it was a stupid mean to expect something. <laughs> you two sure are close. This girl might be the departed, you know. Shush, Hero. But so obvious that it can't be, right? It's too obvious. Oh, I don't mind, as long as Mr. Yashiki trusts me. Sorry. It's a joke. I'm kind of on edge since we don't have any idea who the Departed might be. I don't mind. In this kind of situation, it's natural to have some suspicion. <sighs> I miss my normal school life. Hey, Yashiki. Shouldn't we be able to be pretty much guess who the hooligan may be? Based on what Michiho told me about Mr. Kokori rumors... The delinquent student. I agree with you there, but I still have no clue what it might be. The rumor said a delinquent student was cursed by the shrine in the second floor corridor. Why don't we go take a look there? Wait, are you serious? Aren't you being too cavalier here? We're gonna be stepping into some deep shit if we approach that shrine. I'm not doing it for entertainment. It's for the investigation. You can stay here if you don't want to go. I... I never said I didn't want to go. I just wonder if there was a better way to do this. That's it. I'm not scared at all. What's up? Are we the only ones left in school? Nope, I think the student council members are still here. Damn, they sure like to stray, stay late despite all the rumors. I really fear the depart since I know you're going to protect me. Nope. The heck are you talking about? I'm totally not saving you. I'm not good at ghosts and stuff. And I'm gonna go home now. What? Me too! The female students take the stairs down.
Yo. Hello, Mr. Yashiki. Do you still need anything from me? I've actually read that Nonus, a spirit named Kokuri, is going to kill a hooligan tonight, right? Well... Mr. Kona told me not to discuss the incident with the students out of consideration for their mental well-being. I can't just give him a dismissive reply, though. No need to hide it. The rumors have spread. Assuming that the pianist and Horikoshi the model have been killed just as Nonus said, anyway. And the one who killed them was a spirit named the Departed, right? They're hiding in the school right now. If rumors of the incidents have already spread to this extent, I'm not doing anyone any favors by keeping my mouth shut. I doubt that these rumors have been purposely spread by any one target. These students believe in the departed and they're connecting the dots and spreading the rumors on their own. The weaker students must be tired of living in fear. I guess they're scared of the idea that the person next to them might be the departed. Are you not scared, Kakuta? <laughs> me? Scared? <laughs> no way. If a spirit dare shows itself to me, I'll just go to work with these fists. Haha. <laughs> You're just gonna cast fists? Just punch those ghosts? Bakuri. Because I don't really understand spirits. How about asking Kinukawa from student council? Seems to know a lot about this kind of stuff. Cool again. That's the person mentioned in the notice, right? Do you have any idea who it may be? Hmm, if you're talking about hooligans at this school, I can only think of the delinquents. Those punks keep ignoring the school's rules, and it's really pissing me off. Kakuto's on the disciplinary committee, so it's not surprising that the behavior of some punks has got them all riled up. Did you find Kakuto? Yes, along with the new notice. So it's another new notice. Mind showing me? I showed Doryu the Departed's notice. So they're the threatening to kill someone again. And it's my job to prevent that from happening. If you got any information that could help, please let me know. Sure. Actually, during lunch break, I went to the clock tower. What? You shouldn't be taking risks like that. Spirits don't show up during the day, so it's fine. I didn't go inside, though. The door went and open. That's weird. Did someone lock it? That's unlikely. The key to the clock tower is missing. No way able to enter the clock tower right now. But it was open that night. Was that the departs doing? I guess we should investigate the clock tower. Understood. I'll try searching for the key. Kokuri. Sorry, I don't really know much about spirits. You should ask Michiho instead. She's over on the second floor of the new building. Hooligan. Hooligan, huh? Compared to model and pianos, this one's got a lot more room for interpretation. Find the target might not be so easy. Useless. I finish my conversation with Doryu and leave the student council room. Second floor's corridor should be just ahead. There's a crumpled paper in the gap between the doors. Off limits. The shrine where people supposedly heard Mr. Kokori's voice should be right ahead. Looks like the door is unlocked. Let's check the place out. A tan, ostentatiously styled girl is absentmindedly lingering near the shrine. Yeah, I knew it was you. Warn her? Hey, this place is off limits. You shouldn't be here. You okay? Her reply is unintelligible, more of a groan. Just ignore her, Yashiki. Something's wrong with her. Kokuwa. Kokuwa. An old shrine is standing here. This has got to be the shrine from the rumor about Mr. Kokuri. Let's take a closer look. The first thing that stands out is that it's a rather small shrine. It's completely weathered after being exposed to the elements for a long period of time. A never noticeable feature is the number of talismans on it. 
The image of the talisman looks kind of like a centipede. There's a small gap in the shrine door. It's too dark to tell what's inside, though. We need to open the door first if we want to see what's inside. I reach toward the door to check what's inside. Uh... Old man. The female student next to me groans and slowly forces out some words. Don't do anything bad to Shrine. No! Old man, here. Oh god, mushrooms! <laughs> Growling, the female student launches an attack. <laughs> With a terrifying look in her eyes, the female student raises something resembling a baton. I see something that looks like mushrooms around her neck. Maybe she's possessed. Bag. We try to use my bag as a shield to block her attacks. No. Oh. Lost the odds, but we're not seeing her baton smacks before we can even lift the bag. Well, I get smacked. We clutch the bag tightly and block her attack. Nice. The female student recoils. Grab her hero. Okay. Calm down. Hero captures the student's arms from behind. Helping on immediately restrain her. The student lets out a yell and then goes quiet. Looks like this is the right choice. The student faints and the mushrooms on her neck instantly vanish. So it really was a spiritual phenomenon. Assuming the rest of the rumor is accurate, that would mean the mushrooms were the shrine's curse. Keep an eye on her hero. I'll investigate the inside of the shrine. Sure thing. I walk toward the shrine and put my hand on the door. There's a talisman on it. Inside the shrine, I find some bizarre stuff. Warn you about them centipedes. A petri dish used for experiments. Inside the dish is a dead centipede. Some red substance appears to be growing from the centipede. What in the world is it? Oh, I see you found something interesting. Those red filaments are probably mushrooms. It's equal to tell without the caps. I've only realized the hero's already appearing over my shoulder. Looks like those are mushroom hyphae growing on a dead centipede. I think they're Ophiocordyceps sinensis? Very interesting. But what's it doing here? Old shrines aren't usually a place where you'd store lab equipment. What are you gonna do with the petri dish? But you're gonna keep it. I guess so, yeah. I press my hero, whose eyes are sparkling with curiosity. I collect the petri dish. What are we gonna do with her? Doesn't seem like she's gonna regain consciousness anytime soon. We can't just leave her here. Let's take her back to the infirmary. I hoist the female student on my back and leave the corridor. From there, I walk straight to the infirmary. The smell of cigarette smoke assaults my nose the moment I enter. <laughs> Looks like he needs more sleep more so than usual. You're finally back. I've been waiting. 
Inside, I see a sharp-eyed man tossing a cigarette into a portable ashtray. Mashita. Ugh, the smell of cigarettes. Hey, no smoking inside the school. There are kids here. You're a terrible influence, you know. Where's your common sense, Mashita? Oh, is that how it is? Back in my day, the teachers would openly smoke in the faculty room. Well, times have changed. You need to be more considerate. <sighs> a lot of pain. Anyway, who's that kid on your back? Let me lay her down first, then we can talk. I put the unconscious girl down on the bed. She's totally out of it. Guess I'll just have to leave her here for the moment. Alright. Can you give me the details now? Don't exactly expect to reunite with your friend and find him carrying an unconscious girl on their back. Fine. I've got some questions to ask, too. Ask about Mashita. Satoru Mashita, a mark bearer and former detective who's now working as a private investigator and highly popular with the female fans. Extremely so. He's not really all that knowledgeable about spirits and paranormal phenomena, but after the events of our shared past, he often joins me when I'm spirit when I'm on spirit-related cases. Never would have expected to come to a place like this, even on investigation. Even a school that's still in session. Yeah. Place full of rats sounds like nothing but trouble to me. Hell, I got scolded just for having a freaking smoke. Sneaking into an abandoned school is way easier. Let me just make one thing clear, Majida. I'm begging you. Please try not to attract any unwanted attention. No guarantees in that one, pal. I'm just gonna do things my own way. And if anyone's got a problem with that, they'll just have to deal with it. The corner of his mouth twitches into a mischievous grin. Mashita's a man who will do anything for his investigation. Whereas Okono and Sakamoto will not appreciate his presence or methods. Blat blat. But his eccentric methods have a way of dragging the truth out of situations where a more civilized approach would fail. Well, he's here. Have you finished your job, Mashita? Yeah. Can't tell you much about it, though, since I'm under NDA. And just when I thought I'd be able to relax for a bit. That hag Yasuoka asked me to help you out. She's a real slave driver. This man is different from the other mark bearers. Because of his job, he's a seasoned veteran when it comes to his cases involving dangerous and bizarre spirits. If he's offering to help, I'll jump on it. His help makes it that much more likely that Hero and the Depart's targets will survive. Sorry for causing you trouble. Save your thanks for the old bag. I'm just here to work. That's what he thinks about this case. Yasuoka gave me a summary of the case. A spirit masquerading as a student, huh? Wonder how the grades are. He's cracking jokes, but his eyes show no trace of a smile. Under the surface, he must be just as tense as we are. You want to know what I think? You're basically being jerked around by the Depart's notices. All those spirits with notices, and you're still no closer to figuring out who the Departed is. Maybe you're right. But if I just ignore the notices, someone's going to die. Which they've been, either way. <sighs> and what's your plan? You're just gonna keep dancing to their tune until they get bored and quit. That's... Don't get sidetracked and forget your original goal, Yashiki. The only way you can solve this case is to find the departed hiding in the school. And what you should do is start looking at everyone around you as a potential suspect. By the way, Yashiki. Mashita jerks his head over in the direction of the girl in the bed. Tell me about her already. How long are you going to make me wait? I share everything I've learned about Mr. Kokori and the Hulugan, and the events of the shrine. Huh. <sighs> so this kid attacked you. School violence is kind of a lost art these days. 
What a special moment in your teaching career, eh, Mr. Yashiki? Cut out with that. You can see that makes my skin crawl. No matter how you choose to look at, this kid isn't normal. She called us hooligans and had mushrooms growing along her neck. Right. Considering that, maybe she was possessed by Kokuri. Yep. I recall the time Michio was possessed by the slipmouth Kashima. He was fully under the control of the spirit, led by their desires. The student might have been the same as her. Who is this kid, anyway? She doesn't have her student handbook, and no matter how much we shake her, she's not showing any signs of waking up. Waiting for her to wake up is such a waste of time. Let's just ask someone else about her. She'll be able to find someone who knows who she is pretty quickly. She's obviously trying to stand out. Let's ask around about the Petri dish, too. While we're at it. Who knows? Maybe we can learn new places inside the shrine. So we're just going to show that thing to the students. They're going to start talking about me. Haha, <laughs> too late to worry about your reputation. You already tricked two female students into breaking their curfew. You're really jealous. I don't care if you can all chill me with those brats for investigation, but... You better not do something weird that ends up blowing back onto me, Yashiki. Give me a break, you two! I really hope this puts a stop to this topic. I'll have whoever I don't bring with me keeping an eye on the unconscious girl while I resume the investigation. Let's see if anyone at the school can tell me about this girl with a petri dish. Strength 19, intelligence 16, dexterity is surprisingly pretty low because he smokes too much, I guess. Spiritual power is 7 because he's a paranormal cop. Old oil lighter. A blunt, sarcastic former police detective. Ever since the protagonist saved a life in the bizarre case, he's been working as a private detective. Most of his requests involve spirits, so he's formed a deep bond with the protagonist. He doggedly pursues a case until the end. How much have you learned so far? Oh, that reminds me, I've been wondering about this for a little bit now. I realize that you've started calling Michiho by her first name. Um, mind telling why? I had a feeling this would come up, actually. I told Doryu about how Michiho forced me to call her by her first name if I wanted her to cooperate. I figured. I couldn't imagine someone as serious as you just to me so casual with their students. Hmm. Uh, bring up a good point. What do you think? Should I go back to calling her by her last name? No, no, don't do that. Michiho will hate me. Hmm? Why would she? Uh... She's trying to get along with you in her own way. So I don't want to interfere with her wishes like that. Oh, she could be the departed now. Oh, alright. The Lingwood Girl. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I have an idea who she is. It might be one of those first years, Saki Maruhashi. What's she like? I don't know her personally, but some of the first year council members were telling me some things. They said that she's never had any friends and is always on her own. She's got a bad rep because of it. There's nobody to defend her. There are all kinds of rumors surrounding her. She likes to go out at night, drink and smoke, and she's associated with a biker gang. But you'd be like, not true. These may be just rumors, but if they're true, that makes Saki Maruhashi a kid worthy of the name Hooligan. Petri dish. I take out the creepy petri dish and show it to Doryu. Ah! What is that? A dead centipede and... What are those red things? They're actually mushrooms. Mushroom, mushroom. Do you know anything about this petri dish? Not at all. I don't think at all about it. Mr. Yashi, can you please keep it away from me? Oh yeah, sorry about that. Doryu reaps a huge sigh of relief when I put the petri dish back in my bag. The reaction is totally normal. You and I have just become so desensitized to these sorts of creepy things that we forget how normal people view them. I finish my conversation with Doryu and leave the student council room.
Oh, Mr. Yashiki, you're stealing anything from me. More and more students are getting terrified by the departed. That's not a good thing at all. If you ask me, though, I think I need to train my mind and body more. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if he knows her. Yeah, I know her. She always hangs out in the connecting corridor. She keeps going there even though I've warned her so many times. This is why I hate delinquents. They're stupid. Do you know anything else? Nothing in particular. I don't really care to know about delinquents. If she wasn't a girl, I would have punched her in the face. Hey now, aren't you in the karate club? The other female students shouldn't fight with each other. Ha ha ha! I'm just joking. Martial arts should be used to train your mind and body, not hurt others. Keep your petri dish. What? The moment he sees the dish, his eyes bulge. What's wrong, Kakada? No, it's just... My apologies. It's so disgusting, I don't even know what to say. Centipedes alone are already gross. But the roster is just making so much worse. Where did you find it? The science room. No, it was inside the shrine in the second floor's connecting corridor. Huh? What was this thing doing in there? I have no idea either. Now that's a prank. Oh. <laughs> I have to get back to patrolling. Sorry, but I've got to end our chat here. Huh. And you recognize those mushrooms on there right away. Kakata bids us farewell and the quickly leaves the classroom. Sus. Hey, Yashiki. There's something weird with Kakata's statement. Did you catch it? What's off about Kakata's statement? It's the mushrooms, of course. When I first saw that petri dish, I didn't even realize there were mushrooms. But Kakata knows that right away. That's a bit strange. Exactly. For a sec there, I was worried that you might have missed it. I have a feeling he knows where those mushrooms came from. Maybe you're the true hooligan. We better speak to Kakata again. He should still be at school. Let's go find him. Because the hooligan is just whoever messes with the thing. It doesn't necessarily mean like a literal hooligan. Oh, I was thinking about insects. I feel kind of sorry for insectivores. So what do you want to ask me? By the way, Mr. Yashiki, I bumped into the karate man earlier. Like, literally, he bumped right into me. But he didn't even apologize and went straight upstairs. The other disciplinary committee members would be shocked if they knew. Tell him off for me. Discuss topic. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I've seen her before. But I don't know her name. I'm not a delinquent after all. Or are you? I take out the creepy petri dish and show it to Michiho. Oh, a Chinese redhead. Calipendra subspinibi modulans. I, I don't know how to say this correctly. Did you know? Even though the name centipede means 100 foot, there aren't many centipedes that actually have 100 feet. I think, like, only a few soil centipedes have that many feet. Seizing the opportunity to talk about insects, Michiho immediately begins flexing her knowledge about centipedes. She doesn't even have a reaction to the terrible sight inside the dish. Hey, um, I appreciate the centipede lesson, but... What about the mushrooms? Heh. <laughs> so, these red thingies are mushrooms. No clue. It's beyond my scope of knowledge. Oh, I see. Thanks. Just by reaction, Mijo won't be able to tell us anything useful about the petri dish. Science rules. A large shelf of a glass door. Flask and vials are stored inside. They're clearly lab equipment used for class. I better not touch them. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? A large shelf of glass door. Test tubes and tripods are stored inside. For some reason, there are a number of dead insects stuck on the door. Goodness gracious, I should store these more carefully. A pile of cases used for carrying equipment. I shake it lightly, but it doesn't seem like there's anything inside. Bear? It's almost like the Hokkaido bear. Kakuta's inside the storage room. See, he's scared because he saw, he opened the thing as the hooligan. 
because he opened it and is like, what's this? And he, so he knows what it looks like inside there. Several documents are scared on the floor below him. It looks as if the room has been ransacked. Mr. Yashiki, I didn't do this. The room was already a mess when I came in. Please, you gotta believe me. Just tell me what happened here first, Kakuda. Yes. When I was patrolling the school, I saw someone coming out of the science room. It seemed kind of suspicious, so I decided to check it out. The room looked the same as it always does, but... I'd like the storage room here to have a look just in case. That's when I found this mess. That's what you're saying happened? Yes, that's what really happened. Damn, I could've caught the culprit if I'd just come in sooner. LIES! How could his eyes start every which way as if he's trying to spin his tail? I could tell me that he's hiding something. Let's press him for details. You saw someone coming out of the room, right? What did they look like? A delinquent boy with brown hair. He was running at full speed, so I couldn't get a good look at his face. Why didn't you chase him? I didn't know what I should do. At that time, I had no idea he'd been poking around in the storage room. Is there anything missing from the science room? Hmm, I don't think so. But I'm not totally sure since I don't often come here. My apologies. Did you check if there was any shadows? Someone might be hiding in there. I checked over the room, but I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. That's why I decided to enter the storage room. The storage room was locked, right? Yes, so I unlocked it. Since I'm on patrol, I have the keys with me. Is it easy to borrow the keys? Haha, <laughs> not at all. Who knows what those delinquents would do if they had these keys? Only trustworthy students like me, someone on the disciplinary committee, would be able to borrow the keys. That's all I need to hear from Kakuta. Of the three pieces of information he gave me, two of them are inconsistent. He may give himself away, we point out. Let's put his feet to the fire, shall we? The delinquent in the key. You said you saw a delinquent student, right? Yes, that's right. You said it was locked when you came in, which means the perpetrator locked it behind himself. But you also said the keys under tight control and had never been lent out to the untrustworthy delinquent students. Just wondering if you could explain that for me. Oh. And can you make less of like a JoJo expression? It kind of gives you away pretty badly. You have like the worst poker face in the world. He must have stolen the spare key. Those delinquents, they have no shame. What else is this guy capable of? Well, I suppose we can always go check if the spare key's been stolen or not. So I've got an alternate theory. Kakata, you broke into the room using the key you're holding. I have no idea why you did that, but you started acting weird after I showed this to you. Do you know anything about these mushrooms? I, I don't really know the details. I was just told to do this. By who? That's... The sound of a phone vibrating echoes in the room. Kakuta takes out his phone. He then stares at the screen, his eyes wide of intense concent concentration. Oh. I was summoned. I have to go. Or else... I'll be killed. I could... Mr. Kokori is the, uh, one calling you. K killed Who told you they're gonna kill you? <laughs> Kakuta runs out of the storage room, screaming at the top of his lungs. Wait! I dashed out a cocktail of hero falling on on my heels. When I saw him running away like that, my mind immediately flashed back to Naomi and Horikoshi ran away from us right before she met a tragic fate. I had to turn to prevent history from repeating itself. But, my stamina fills me midway for the chase and Kakuta disappears in the distance. Damn, that kid's in peak condition! He didn't even slow down for a moment! Is he even human? 
I agree with Hiro. His physical prowess certainly seems like it's beyond that of a typical high school student. Almost as if you're being possessed by a spirit. Guess we should just go back to the science room and inspect what we left behind. Yeah. We return to the science room storage room. The whole body feels as heavy as lead, both physically from fatigue and mentally from the looming sense of powerlessness. I'm starting to feel like I'm prey stuck in a spider's web, struggling pointlessly while the departed exerts total control over me. Does this drill have any purpose? Can it even save a single person? Oh, come on, not that frown again. I get what you're feeling, but set it aside and cope with it later. Cope? We still have some time before night comes. Let's do what we need to do. I know. Hero is right. We need to act, not mope. Let's inspect the storage room. We need to figure out why Kakata broke into this place. Bear. This is a fine stuffed bear. It's not uncommon for schools to have stuffed animals, but a stuffed bear? That's unusual. I'm drawn to it. Just like me. I see something glowing in its mouth. Put my hand in my mouth, though I can't fit on the way inside. What are you doing, Yashiki? Oh, there's something inside, but my hands are too big to fit all the way in. Do you want me to give it a try, then? I didn't mean it that way, but would you mind trying for me? To be honest, I don't really want to do it, since it looks like there will be weird bugs in there. But I guess I have no choice, huh? Hiro timidly puts her hand to the bear's mouth with a gloomy expression on her face. <sighs> Just a little bit more. Nice, I got it. Here you go. Tooth. There are several documents on the floor. This must be Kakuta's doing. I pick up one of the documents and look at the cover. There's a label with a caption written on it. Research the native plants that grow around Konehara Academy. There are two dates written on the title. One from 11 years ago and another from 9 years ago. Did this research span two years? I find a preface on the next page. The fox forest behind the school seems to have a special environment. A variety of plants native to the area can be seen here. As a science teacher at Konehara Academy, I set out to catalog all of them. Along the previous page, there's a summary of the research done on the various plants. There are photos of plants and moss, complete with detailed research information. It's furrow, yet a surprisingly easy read. It's clear that the author is both a fine writer and an educator. What in the... The Patriarchan Fox, Azalea, and Foxtail Fern has been torn out. I skimmed through the end, but I don't find anything about the red mushrooms. Maybe what you're looking for is on the torn page. Most likely. Kakuta must have done this. I bet it's why he snuck in here. Why would he do that, though? If he got caught, he'd be expelled. So you say that mushroom data would have been worth that risk for him. I guess he thought it was. I can't imagine what information would be that important, though. If we can find that lost page, it may get a step closer to understanding Kakuta's motives. Should we report this to the school, Yashiki? No, we shouldn't. We'd back Kakuta in the corner if we did. We can always decide to turn him in later once we've learned, heard his side of the story. Kokuwa? There's a large spiral shell fossil inside the shelf. Is this an ammonite? It's a city of shape, looks pretty artistic or something unnatural. Hmm. Hmm. Kakuta was rummaging through this shelf until a bit ago. The door's wide open, and the documents are all scattered. Ah, Mr. Yashiki, finally! Abe showed up early and left me a message. Seekers of wisdom, I shall wait you in the Garden of Knowledge. What does that even mean? Don't ask me, I've got no clue either. Well, that's all, see you later. Library. Have you finished your business with us? Michio strolls off. There's no one inside the library. Or so I thought. After a beat, a boy suddenly emerges from the behind the bookshelves. Welcome to the Garden of Knowledge, Mr. Yashiki. 
Seeing that you're here, that must mean you're in need of assistance from the sage, aka me. You're the one who called me here. Goodness, so you haven't realized it yet. My left eye said you want my wisdom. That's why I told you where I was in advance. This is my... <laughs> you probably have, like, contact lenses in. This is my being generous and proactively providing you service. I can't follow his line of thinking at all. What if it for Surin? He's being nice to me today. Maybe he's in a good mood or something. There's a good chance to get some information out of him. Let's play along. I didn't realize that your clairvoyance let you see so far ahead. You really are incredible. Just as you mentioned, there was something I wanted to ask you. That's right, ask away. I'm listening. You seem to be in a good mood today. What's got you feeling so upbeat? What fine perception. I expect to know less from the one and only spirit doctor. I will be meeting my mentor for the first time in a while today. So they're the reason you turn out this way. I mean, are they the person who got you interested in paranormal phenomena? Correct. My great master taught me the truth of the world. They may be the man I am today. Another the reason why Abe has developed such a interesting personality. They just warped his mind and completely ruined a kid's life. You hate to see it. Please wait, Mr. Yashiki. I shall share information regarding the departed case on one condition. That condition being you must complete my trial. What trial? I want to see your true abilities as a spirit doctor. Be it your spiritual state or power, show me everything. I'm busy with my investigation, though. It'll take about a moment of your time. Are you ready? Now allow me to explain the trial. I have three talismans with me. Take them and get a good look. Each talisman has a symbol on it. Triangle, square, or star. I'm going to envision one symbol in my head. I'm sure you already know what you should do, right? You merely need to read my mind with your supernatural powers. And state the symbol I'm picturing. The heck? Did you hit your head or something? Phew. The prattling of outsiders is not necessary for this trial. This is my trial for Mr. Yashiki. But I'm not a psychic, let alone someone with supernatural powers. Humbling yourself, I see. I have selected a symbol. Now demonstrate your powers to me. Amelie starts mumbling something as if he's meditating. Seimon is what they call pentagram and divination, which would be a star. I was gonna say it's probably gonna be the star. Domon Seimon. But he might be trying to throw me off and the correct answer should be either a triangle or square. I need to give a correct answer though. the options. This is a very specific one. Are you just gonna like spook by it and you just gotta lose? Or let's try opening the lid of the petri dish to see inside. The hideous centipede shows up the moment I open the lid. I'm pretty sure Abe's terrified of bugs, hero. Hmm, I see. Yashiki, you better show our young friend here what's in the dish. It's a new car! I present, <laughs> I present the petri dish to Abe, making sure he gets a good look at the centipede inside. <laughs> centipede! Put it away from me, please! Are you gonna give me your information, then? You want to hunt scoundrels! Is it unfair? This is your punishment for disrespecting adults. And wasting our time, you brat. What are you gonna do now? Fine, fine, I lose. Get that petri dish away from me now. Looks like this is the right choice. I've learned a lot. 
So this is how you exterminate spirits. You observe them and then strike at their weaknesses. That actually is kind of true, yeah. How incredible, spirit doctor. I've fulfilled my end of the bargain, Ame. Time for you to spill everything you know. Understood. Kokuri. Well, let me know that new notice has arrived and ask him about Mr. Kokuri. So this time it's Mr. Kokuri, huh? I know him, obviously. A spirit that haunts the shrine in the second floor's connecting corridor, as well as the fox forest, is it not? Forest? That's new to me. Goodness me, the spirit doctor didn't even know that trivial bit of information. I guess you leave me no choice. Well, I'm going to tell you the rumors I have learned. This was a well-known rumor that spread around ten years ago. There's an old shrine gate in the north corner of the school grounds. Beyond the gate lies a path leading to the forest. It's said that he appears there at night. Mr. Kokori is just a guy with a gun! A man clad in white garb and a fox mask. He's Mr. Kokori. He was dubbed Kokori because of the mask. As I'm sure you know, the ritual used to speak of the dead, Kokuri summons a part fox spirit. This just looks like me walking in my backyard. I believe he was given a name by someone who knew he was a fox spirit. Fox spirits have, like, upgraded. They got guns now. It said Mr. Kokuri used to be a priest of the shrine in the forest. In his past life, he patrolled the path and performed ritual cleansing to keep the shrine free of negative energy. He continues this routine even after death. He will never forgive anyone disgraced as a shrine. Should he find one? Blat. He will shoot that scoundrel right in the head. That is the Mr. Kokuri I know. Mr. Kokuri is just a guy like... Highly defensive of his property. It's not a ghost. Thank you for allowing me to impart my wisdom. That's different from the rumor I heard. There are two rumors of Mr. Kokuri, after all. The Fox Forest rumor predates the one about the second floor shrine. Perhaps details have changed over time for the retelling of the rumor. Or, what if both rumors are actually true and none of the details have been changed at all? Well, Mr. Kokuri actually shows up both in the forest and the corridor. Interesting. Unfortunately, Mr. Kokori of the Corridor is completely different from the one in the forest, in terms of the period, place, and the curses they wield. Do you still think they are the same? Can't say either way. Haha, <laughs> you're being cautious with your theories. I wonder if that's how you've managed to survive. What do you think, Abe? I have no idea. A definite conclusion would require more information. Should we assume both rumors are true, though? That means the two spirits are connected. Is there anything else that leads you to that conclusion? More or less. The priest that became Mr. Kokori is said to have traveled the forest path in his past life. That path connected two shrines. The first one is a shrine in the forest, and the other one is... Kokori's shrine on the second floor. You see, that shrine was originally on the ground. Kokori appears in both shrines because they are connected. Is that what you think? Precisely. Two shrines and two rumors related to Kokori. What could this mean? Hooligan. Hooligan, huh? A person who is a far cry from the upstanding citizen I am. I haven't the faintest idea who that might be. Blinking girl. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if he knows her. I am not familiar with such an individual. My left eye refuses to even see those of low spiritual state and the poor. Creepy Peter dish. I take the creepy Peter dish out and show it to Abe. Stop it! Ah, that's too much! I quickly return the Petri dish to my bag and I'll light up Abe's feelings. After I finish talking of Abe, I leave the library. Hero's phone is vibrating. Excuse me for a moment. Hero answers the phone begins to speak. 
Judging from the parts of the conversation I can hear, it seems like Mashita is on the other end of the call. Mashita said the girl has regained consciousness. On his words, I, I didn't come here to deal with brats. Get your asses back here now. So we head to the infirmary. It's almost time for our students to leave school anyway. Can I leave the talking to you, Yashiki? You're the faculty member here, after all. I'm not super confident, but I'll give it a shot. We found a Petri dish inside last time, but let's check it out again just to be sure. There's really nothing else inside. Hold on, there's something in the corner. Toof. I find the delinquent girl Mashita glaring at each other when I arrive at the infirmary. Fuck <sighs> damn time you go back here. I told this brat what happened, but I'm not sure if she actually understood anything. Seeing how as she hasn't spoken a damn word, do something about it, Yashiki. So, the situation falls to me. Once I'm all ready, I should talk to the delinquent girl. After taking a deep breath and organizing my thoughts, I approach the girl and talk to her. Glad to see if you regain consciousness. Your name's Sakemaru Hashi, right? The name's Yashiki. I'm a temporary teacher here. Have you heard anything about me? I'm currently investigating the departed case. How do I put this? Do you remember attacking me with a baton? This isn't going well. She's not answering at all. A chime sound signaling the close of school for the day. I'm going. Marahashi starts walking toward the exit. Wait! There's something I want to ask you! At that moment, someone else enters the infirmary. Good afternoon. It sure is quite lively here, isn't it? Yasuoka! Hmm, my. It's been a while since we last saw each other. The beguiling kimono-clad woman is Tawako Yasuoka. She's never Mark Bear and also a renowned fortune teller. She's also quite famous as a spiritualist and has helped me a lot. The sacred objects Moya brought to the school are actually hers. What brings you here? Why, I'm here to help you out, obviously. Diamond and Moy have been keeping me informed about your case. I see you've gone and gotten yourself wrapped up in another terrifying incident. And knowing you, I suppose the wheels of fate are turning. Must be turning once again. Round one. None can accept the fate they were born with. I'm curious to see what twists and turns that strange fate of yours will take you down. Perhaps Yachioka's age has given her this philosophical perspective on life. However, she's certainly not cold-hearted. If she were, she wouldn't bother lending a hand to people who face a dawning fate. By the way, who is this girl? Murahashi stares at Yasuoka. This is a far different look than the glare she directed at us earlier. There's not a trace of her prior hostility. Um... You're Tawako Yasuoka, aren't you? You're an OMG paranormal experience. Yes, that is I. Whoa, are you serious? A legendary celeb is here? Sh 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 I'm like, super nervous now. What's with that 180? Or how she went from ice cold to totally excited. She seems overjoyed to meet someone that she's seen on television. Your raw energy is out of this world, Miss Yasuoka. You're so freaking refreshing. My, my. Thank you, dear. You are also very beautiful. That hair color suits you well. You think so? <laughs> um, Miss Yasuoka, can I get your autograph? Okay.
After that, I ask Yasuko to help me persuade Maruhashi to talk. Because of that, she reluctantly agrees to cooperate with us. I'm only doing this because Miss Yasuoka asked me to I don't like you. So what do you want to know? That's the Maruhashi. Oh, you want to get to know me? Saki Maruhashi from 1B. My favorite subjects are math and art. My favorite food is sweet red bean buns, and I love looking more cycles. Just look at them? Not riding? Yeah, I don't have a license. I really love the plating and gold glitter paint on vintage motorcycles. I told you, she's like non natural delinquent. That's like the little twist. Well, her cousin is. My cousin's the leader of a biker gang. They got this red chicken on the cow of his bike, and it just looks so cool. Once more, she starts excitedly talking about motorcycle detailing. She looks like anything of an enthusiastic kid. I've heard that you're often hanging out by yourself. I can help that, you know. There's no one in the school that I can talk to about art. And I get bored talking about other stuff. That's about the Mr. Kokuri rumors. Do you know anything about Mr. Kokuri? See, I think what's his name, the Karate Kid, is gonna... He's gonna be the one that's gonna die this chapter. He's the target. Nope, never heard of him before. Who is he anyway? That's a pretty strange name. He's a spirit that haunts the second floor corridor. Gah, are you for real? Wait, I've never gone there if I'd known. It's stupid to mess around with spirits. Does that spirit show up from the shrine? It's also said he appears in the Fox Forest. Not the Fox Forest. That place sure is bad news, huh? I've heard weird stories about it. What kind of stories? Are they about spirits, or...? No, not those kinds of stories. I heard punks used to sneak into the forest a long time ago. I don't know if it's real or not, but apparently someone would never come back. Punks in the forest at night, huh? What a strange combination. Ask me why. I've got no idea. But none of the students ever here ever go near that forest because of that rumor. That's why she attacked us. I don't remember. It's like there's a blank spot in my memory or some shit. How much do you remember then? Hmm. I remember going to the corridor after school. I know that place is like off limits, but I like hanging out there, you know? It's empty and the wind feels really nice. I was just spacing out while looking at the sky. But then I got this strange feeling. I got goosebumps. I started freaking out. And it all came from that shrine. So I approached it. And I opened the door. I found a disgusting petri dish inside. I thought it was just a horrible prank. So I went to grab it. And my memory got wiped after that. I don't even remember attacking you or being carried to the infirmary or anything. That's all. So you're not the one who put that dish there. Of course not! My gramps is the chief priest of Kintoki Shrine. Ever since I was a kid, I had a fear of the gods drilled in my skull. And you think I do such a blasphemous shat? Hell no! Seeing how pale her face is, I don't think she's lying. Who put the petri dish there then? I've asked for everything I can think of. Is Saki Maruhashi really the hooligan that Mr. Kokori is targeting? I share my doubts of Mark Bearers and ask for their opinion. Hmm, I don't know. Never the law of matter conservation nor Euclidean geometry apply to spiritual beings, so it's not like you can apply logic here. I don't know about her being the target hooligan, but she's definitely a delinquent. I'm thinking the same thing. Hey old hang, the spiritual stuff is kind of your whole thing, no? Give us your take. Let's see. Murahashi doesn't strike me as a malicious person. And if she were truly the target, she should have been slain in front of the shrine. Instead, the spirit only chose to drive her mad. In my opinion, I am doubtful that she's your hooligan. Well, who is a hooligan, then? Even after discussing the matter further, we failed to arrive at a convincing answer to this mystery. That means we're still hacking information. We have no choice but to keep investigating the subject. Which means that our next destination will be the place Abi mentioned earlier. The Fox Forest behind the school. 
A few days after the incident at the clock tower, new notice arrived. This time the murderer is a spirit named Kokuri, and the target is Hooligan. A rumor is also circulating about Mr. Kokuri. They say he's the spirit of a priest that haunts the corridor shrine and punishes delinquents. Rumor has it the hooligans who desecrate the shrine will be cursed by Mr. Kokuri and mushrooms will grow on their faces. When we went to investigate, we were attacked by a victim of the curse, a student named Maruhashi. She fits the description of a hooligan, but is she the target? We managed to get information about Mr. Kokuri, a spirit who haunts the fox forest behind the school, through a student named Abe. The two Mr. Kokuri rumors are different, but they share one aspect, a male priest. But are they really targeting Maruhashi? If not, then who is the hooligan? Kakuta. By the time we finish our discussion, the sun has pretty much set. The night phase of our investigation is about to begin. I have a hero Amashi that will accompany me for the night. The ever will stay here. I'll be managing the sacred objects in Moe's stead tonight. Come to me whenever you've gathered enough lost souls. You're going to help us out, Yasuoka. But of course, I have far more knowledge about the spirit world than you lot. I should be able to use that knowledge to assist you somehow. Experience is the best teacher, after all. It's dangerous, so... Huh, I appreciate your concern, but I've already lived a long, full life. I don't really value my life as much as I used to. I'd rather not see anyone younger than me die, though. So please allow me to be of service, Yashiki. Alright. See that we are dealing with spirits here. I'm grateful to have an expert with us. Still, I can't have her walking around the forest in that beautiful kimono. I'll just have her stay here. You better stay here too, Mariachi. At least until we've got a clear answer to who the hooligan is. Sure, I don't mind. I just asked Mr. Yasuoka to give me life advice. Life advice? You're too young for that. Huh. Everyone has their own problems, you know. It doesn't matter how old they are. Even my own grandchild. And just like that, the three women quickly become immersed in their chit-chat. As I look at them... Hey. Mashida approaches me. Take this, Yashiki. He hands over a paper bag. There's something heavy inside. I run my fingers along the paper bag. You know what it is. It seems to be made of metal and has a rectangular section. Leading to a more rounded section. Mashida, this is... Blat, blat. How else you could be a pound of cop? Lower your voice, idiot. Do you want the others to find out? But I don't know how to use one of these. Relax. This one doesn't have a safety. Just aim and pull the trigger. Still, because it doesn't have a safety, be very careful with it. Don't cause it go off by accident. Don't give this kind of thing to civilians. It's for your own safety. You have no idea what you be dealing with. And if something happens to me, you'll be glad you have it. Don't hesitate to use it when needed. You hear me? Okay. If we have a gunfight, because the ghost has a shotgun. See, it's gonna be a little like shootout, the okay corral. What are you two doing? Nothing! Uh, if we're all set, then let's get on with this investigation. The Fox Force is located in the northern corner of the school, just beyond the shrine gate. To get to the shrine gate, take the road in front of the clock tower. I hope we find something. Maybe Kakoto will be there. We haven't seen him since he ran off. We have no idea where he went, though. Sorry to say, but there's nothing we can do about it. I recall Kakoto's parting words to us. I was summoned. I have to go, or else I'll be killed. MK. We called Kakuta. For what reason? By the way, Yashiki. Hey, isn't Nakamatsu at Kujo Mansion? Why don't you give him a call? I need to maybe I'll research the background details of this case on the internet. Well, I'm still not sure I should involve him in this. We're in dire need of information now. If I have any questions, I should call him. Call Aita. I pick up the phone in the infirmary and punch in the mansion's number. Nakamatsu here. It's me, Yashiki. And you look up a few things for me. Sure, alright. Tell me what you need me to find. 
I share details of the incident to Aza. You just keep running into spirits one after the other, huh? There's way too much evil stuff terrorizing that school, man. If I was enrolled there, I would just taken off running and never looked back. So what do you want to ask? Chat. Thanks for this afternoon, Yashiki. What are you talking about? Damn, you forgot already? You helped me cheer Suzu up. Oh yeah, back at the hospital. I only did that because you encouraged me. No, you mean a lot to her, you know? She really believes in you. Everyone really depends on you. I'm jealous. Eh, hey, it's no big deal. Oh, come on. No need to be so humble, man. Makes me wonder if I'll be as impressive as you are when I reach your age. I wonder. It all depends on your effort level, I guess. Do your best. you still got plenty of time to become the man you want. Yeah, I'll give my best shot. Mr. Kokiri? Never heard of him. I knew it. No hits. Maybe he's a minor spray that's only known at Konar Academy. Hooligan. We'll have hooligans show up when I search. Can you try to narrow it down a bit? Like, give me a first or last name or something? Useless. Who in the world is hooligan? We still don't have any confirmation. We do have a suspect. Find me information about Shinichi Kakuta. Shinichi Kakuta from Konohara Academy, huh? You got it. That Kakuta kid seems to be famous in the karate world. Performed well in several tournaments and has a promising future. Man, I'm getting kind of jealous. But there's a post that caught my attention. What post? It's a comment thread on the article. With the obvious caveat of never trusting any unsourced comment you could find on the internet. This Kakuta kid supposedly punched a student from another school and injured them. That'd be a clear-cut case of criminal assault. The threat continues on. Despite that incident, they still took part in a tournament afterward. He should have at least gone to house arrest if something like that was true. I wonder what's going on. That's suspicious. Sus. Rumors say a senior at Kona Arakami alumnus covered up the incident. If that's true, Kakuta's probably pretty indebted to him. If these rumors about Kakuta are true, the fine upstanding student on the disciplinary committee actually has two faces. How'd that be related to this case, though? I mean, he did say you'd punch someone if they were, like, a boy. Red mushrooms growing out of a dead centipede. Yuck! This thing that makes me feel gross. I don't have to see the real thing. Talk to you later! Just like old times. Wooden gun to Fox Forest. Eat Crimson Devil to see Invisible Kokuri. You mean the centipede? You have to eat the centipede? Uh, again. What's wrong, Yashiki? No, it's nothing. There's gotta be a work of that female doll again. She wanted to tell me something. Hooligan has gone to the fox forest. Eat Crimson Devil to see the invisible Kakuri. If the previous pattern holds, this information must have something to do with the spirit. I have no idea what that doll's goal is, but it doesn't hurt to keep that information in mind. I remember I considered that the one student with the mark of the face could be the doll or something weird. And then the, uh, you know, what's her name is the departed. Now, I've seen you before. Not here. Ah, here we go. We arrive at the north end of the school grounds. The shrine gate we see before us must be the entrance to the fox forest. An old shrine gate, it looks regal despite the dull color. 
Beyond the gate is a dense, gloomy forest. This place is really suspicious. I feel like a demon or a snake is about to lurch out. Hmm. A traffic cone and barrier are blocking the way. I imagine they're there to prevent people from going in. Mostly liability, because obviously you just step over it. However, this might have the opposite effect. They're quite attention grabbing, and it's not difficult to bypass the barrier. The fox forest is just up ahead. The shrine gate and overgrown path continues deeper into the forest. This should be the path Abe mentioned. The path that connects the Kokuri Shrine's former location at the school of the shrine in the forest. Mr. Kokuri uses his path to go back and forth between the two shrines. Are these tiny ass cones actually tend to close the road? What a joke. The path ahead is unknown territory. Stay sharp, Mashida. Yeah. You better not let your guard down either. We delve deeper into the pitch black forest. As we press forward, the light from the flashlight illuminates more and more trees, crowning in around us. I'm so riled up that the shadowy forms look like a horde of monsters to me. Who knows, maybe a real monster is poised to strike just beyond the imagined monsters I'm seeing. Once my mind starts down that train of thought, my skin starts to crawl. I'm getting my own head and making myself paranoid. Finally somewhere new. We've been like at the same school this entire game. Before long we arrive at an old path leading to the shrine. Although it's only a few minutes from the gate, I feel like we've entered another world. Finding a spirit in a forest at night, huh? Reminds me of the mess we were in four months ago. Bees? Yeah. We were showing Christy back then. Christy Aramura is one of the mark bearers and a former newscaster. If the news that arrived at Kujo Mansion a few days ago is true, she's currently overseas covering a story. Speaking of Nagashima, didn't he ignore your warning and try getting himself involved in this case? I chewed his ass out. He should stay out of your hair for a while. Ah, oh, okay. And here I thought Sho would through from the case on his own accord. I don't know what exactly Mashita told him. I don't want to ask. Best to just leave that stone unturned. Don't know how long that brat be able to endure it. It's time for the adults to put an end to this thing. Hey! You're right here! Is that Kakuta? Hey, Kakuta! Why are you here? This... This is the end. What end? I did do him a favor. I should have gotten involved. Fox. He's mumbling something to himself. His voice is hoarse as if the words are cut in the back of his throat. What in the hell happened, Kakuta? Is that an auto read? I don't want to die. And he just died. God! His face bulges from within. Red lines and webbing across his skin as it's pulled apart. His expression contorts in agony as he screams. Mushrooms sprout from within his wounds. He went somewhere inside his head. More and more mushrooms split his skin to pieces. What has happened to Kakuta's body? <laughs> well, we know the mushrooms are partially illusion. Well, partially. Clutching his face, Kakuta runs away while screaming. His figure disappears into the woods. Yep, he's dead. We did it, Yashiki! We saved the school! Could that be... Mr. Kokuri's curse? I immediately reminded of the rumors of a delinquent boy whose ear turned into mushrooms. What's happened to Kakuta is even more horrific than the rumors. For fuck's sake. How? How that brat get cursed? I think we know the answer to that. He's cursed because he's hooligan. What the frack did he do? 
I don't know, but... Hakuta seems to have an idea what he got cursed. If we do whatever he did, we'll be cursed too. <sighs> we don't know what action provokes Mr. Kakuri's ire. Which means we need to be extremely careful in this forest. Mushroom, mushroom! A cluster of mushrooms is growing on a tree trunk. I hear something. It sounds like a human groaning. Is there something in the darkness? Inspect the darkness. I wave my flashlight toward the direction of the groan. The nearby trees are illuminated by the light. But it's still too dark to see anything else. I stare into the darkness trying to get a better look. I see. Ow! <laughs> what was that? Those eyes. Those eyes are looking at us. It's a spiritual phenomenon tied to Kokuri. Whatever spirits in this forest do it. I don't really know. At that moment, I feel something strange at the bottom of my foot. It feels like I'm stepping on something small and hard. I raise my foot and pick up the item. Tooth. It's an eerie tooth. There's an old stone lantern. There's an animal carved on top of the lantern. It looks like a mouse to me. These animals mean anything. I'm getting curious now. I better look it up. The stone is quite weathered, so these things are quite old. Its surface is mostly covered in moss and mushrooms. Mm -hmm. There's an old stone there. And cow. Yes. Tiger. Rabbit. Stone stone lantern. Dragon. Dog. Let's not go like quite near that one yet. And the stones seem to be animal tracks leaning further in the woods, diverging from the path. Push my through the dense foliage, we walk further into the woods. I wonder how far this trail goes. What if we can't find our way back home? That. There's an open area in front of us, something's there. I find a different path. I guess this is the back road. There's a large rock at the end of the path. What on earth is that supposed to be? A huge stone is blocking the path. A thick shrine rope is wrapped around the stone. It looks like a serpent. I don't know what that means. Should I investigate more closely? The rope looks like it's protecting this huge rock. There must be something behind it. Should I try touching the rope? I take a step closer and touch the rope. Ow! Suddenly a sharp chill runs down my spine. Is that supposed to be a warning or something? I better stop then. I grab the rope and try shaking it hard. Ow! Severe chills besiege my entire body once again. I knew it. This isn't just an ordinary stone. I better stop. Something rolls down from the gap between the rope and the stone. Is it because I shook it? Tooth. Plants of stone seems to be animal tracks leading in the woods. I follow the animal tracks around by overgrown flora once again. 
wonder what's waiting for me in this deep dark forest. Deep dark. That. There's an open area in front of us. Something's there. We've arrived at a small meadow. There are some random things scattered on the ground here. Everything is old and unusable. You may as well call it junk. Perhaps this place used to be a garbage dump. There's an old sideboard on top of a broken trailer. It's a wooden sideboard. This kind of thing used to serve as a nose board in olden times. These days you don't see them outside of period dramas. There's a brief sentence written in an old-fashioned script. The shrine, two beats for the monkey, three beats for the tiger, one beat for the snake. Tch, that's not making any sense to me. You're a teacher, aren't you, Yashige? Solve this one. Machida immediately gives up. Looks like I'm going to have to unravel this puzzle myself. Hmm, let's see. It starts out with to the shrine. So maybe it's indicating a ritual one has to perform before visiting the shrine. Monkey, tiger, and snake are obviously referring to the Chinese zodiac signs. So what does beat mean? Clapping. Right, clapping your hands is a typical part of a shrine visit, so that seems to fit. So that means we have to clap our hands in a particular manner before going to the shrine. This is probably how people in the past showed the respect of the gods living in the shrine. I jot down the contents of the board just in case. Yush. Yush. An abandoned decaying drum. Its frame has gotten rusty over being exposed to the elements. Why is this in the forest, though? Better take a closer look. Remember the drum is stained pitch black. It's too dark to see anything inside. Should I take a closer look? I get a mix of the drum and peek inside. The inside is also pitch black. My guess is that they used this to burn things. I assume they were burning garbage, given the surroundings. What did they do it here, though? I don't know. Hmm? There's something at the bottom of the drum. Burning bodies. There's not enough light for me to make out what it is with my naked eyes. Should I shine my flashlight on? Whoa, hand. Ow. I might take all the damage. Whoa. What's wrong? Why'd you start screaming out of the blue? In the drama, there's a hand with mushrooms. What did you say? Mushroom appears into the drama. Can't see shit. Turn the light here. Okay. I turn my flashlight toward the inside of the drum while Mashita looks in. Remember, we only find a thick pile of dark gray ashes. There are several mushrooms as well. The same ones as on the nearby trees. Anyone can tell this drum hasn't been used for a long time. There's something in the ashes. Toof. It's an eerie tooth. Yush. Was it all just a spiritual phenomenon? Whose hand was it then? Clap. Two cups of monkey, three cups of the tiger, and one cup of the snake. Alright. That must have changed something. Let's see what it was. What is that? A stupid figure is blocking our path. It's a man with mushrooms sprouting from his body. Or rather, it's more like a man who has become mushrooms. I mean, that's the previous tool again, right? Or one of them.
The mushroom man lets out a shout of joy before vanishing. Two beats for the monkey, three beats for the tiger, and one beat for the snake. Maybe the board's message helped us exercise the impurity, aka the spirit. Hey. You know. That monster was wearing a Konaha Academy uniform. You think it's Kakada? Nope, he had blonde hair, it wasn't as big as Kakada. Who the frack was that bastard then? Hmm, let me think. Arahashi mentioned some delinquents who disappeared in the forest. Maybe he's one of them. Kokuri's deep seated grudge is swirling all around this forest. One slip up and that figure might be the last thing we ever see. Animal tracks. We follow the animal tracks around my overgrown flora once again. I wonder what's waiting for me in this deep, dark forest. This fantastical forest. That. There's an open area in front of us. Something's there. Several logs have been arranged in this meadow. They kind of resemble a fence. An ordinating number of mushrooms are growing around the logs. Mushroom farm. This place looks like a mushroom farm to me. Better be careful, Yashiki. This place is practically screaming ambush to me. A stump of mushrooms growing on it. What's that? Something stuck on the other side of the stump. I take a few steps close and find a metal grip protruding from the ground. I try to pull it out. It was actually a shovel. What's it doing here? <laughs> sound like a monkey ghost. The voice just now. It sounds like a male's voice. Mashita is not showing in reaction. Looks like I'm the only one who can hear it. The shovel might have some sordid tail attached to it. Despite the, this creepiness, the shovel might come in handy. I decided to take it despite my pounding heart's protestations. On the ground I see a mass with a rather odd shape, almost like a body, right? What is that? I better examine it. On this mass around my moss doesn't resemble a human. Should I dig it out to find what it is? We'll never know unless we check. I take out the shovel and stick it into the mass. I part of the mask crumbles away. I carefully pick it up and look it over. I believe this is a kind of mushroom. Its surface is hard as tree bark. So this mass is a giant mushroom of moss growing on its surface. There's something buried in the place I dug out. Doof. The logs are someone like a fence. I can't see what's on the other side of the fence. Let's move in closer and get a better look. Oh no. There's Kakuta. We find a corpse wearing a Konohara Kami uniform in the ground. Yeah, they are bodies. The masses. They're just the older ones. Unsettling, whitish mushrooms are growing from the body. Is this never a victim of Kokuri's curse? What are we going to do? Stay back. I'll inspect the corpse. I cautiously approach the dead body. Where should I start? Body? My eyes are fixed on the corpse. Ugh. I can feel gastric juices welp into my throat. The more I stare at it, the more repulsive it looks. This used to be a human being, and now it looks like this. Don't look away. I had a mild castigation to myself to you observing the body. While the spreading mushrooms have torn up the uniform, it isn't that dirty. He must have died recently. A green tie. That indicates he's a second year. Mushrooms are growing all over his large body. Pant pockets? I reached inside the corpse's pant pockets. 
Inside I find a smartphone. It's pretty much stock and has no distinctive customizations, making it hard for us to guess who owned it. Maybe I can learn something from the phone itself. I press the buttons with no avail, I guess it's been broken. I reach inside the corpse's blazer pockets. I find a piece of paper inside the pocket. It seems to have been torn from something. I position the beam of my flashlight so I can examine the paper's contents. Fuck the cut. A type of fungus that only lives in the fox forest. A sporocarp doesn't have a cap or stock, it takes the shape of a reed. A poisonous mushroom, it contains 10 times the amount of psilocybin hallucinogenic as the famous psilocybia agendity. I'm not gonna like bother. As of this writing, there are currently no laws regulating possession or cultivation of this fungus. However, concerning the negative impact it would have on individuals, especially minors, official regulation and study are needed. Descriptions of a plan are written on. This must be the missing page from the guide in the storage room. Scarlet strip shaped mushrooms. It should be referring to these plants. So these red mushrooms are called Fox Lakata. According to the information, they seem to be mushrooms with strong hallucinogenic effects. There's another piece of paper inside the pocket. Unlike the first, this one is written in rough, hurried pensmanship. The offer of this note was definitely pissed off. The murder of Lake S. The minor offender in the case seemed to have ingested Fox Lakata, and the one who sold the mushrooms to them was Kay, Kakuda. I've seen shifty looking youngsters roaming around the fox forest. Looks like they intend to harvest Fox Lakata. There are also some students from our school, including Kay. I didn't disclose this information to the public out of fear that it would damage the school's reputation. That was a grave mistake. I take responsibility for everything. The murder of a mother and child at Lake S, an incident I've never heard of before. That's all there is to inspect. Mother and child. Two shrines. Found anything useful, Yashiki? Yeah, quite a bit. I describe the corpse's features and show Mashi to the item I found. <sighs> I guess that corpse is that brat, huh? Kakura. Oh, Gotta be. He's a well built second year. And that torn research paper in his pocket is a dead giveaway. If it's not Kakura, who else could it be? Kakura had been cursed by Kakuri. The curse didn't have just because he ran away. He probably lost his stamina here. We might have a better idea what he came here once we check out his belongings. Let's keep that stuff, Yashiki. Agreed. Now for a silent prayer for his soul and leave the place. I realized something on our way back. Unlike the other victims, Kako's corpse didn't disappear. I wonder why. Because it's mushroom now. The only possible reason I could come up with this is maybe when he passed, he wasn't human any longer. Yeah, see? Kaku Kakuda had basically become mushrooms. Even his parents wouldn't recognize him in that state. I wonder when it's a bare death. Not even leaving him behind a corpse and being completely stripped of all your distinguishing human features. Kuku. Mushrooms are growing on a lump of moss. There's nothing particularly interesting here. We find ourselves in an open space after passing the gate. This should be the grounds of the shrine. However, there are no remains of any buildings to be seen. Are they completely decayed? Yes. Yush. An old stone lantern of mushrooms scattered here and there. At that moment, I spot something glinting on top of the lantern. I step closer and find a small object on it. Oh, good catch. You make a good detective, Yashiki. Toof. Yush. An old land entry sells a shrine. Koiwa. Koiwa. Thick bushes and shrubs crowd this area. Hey, Yashiki. Do you see that red thing behind these bushes? I stream my eyes staring at the bushes. 
but it's too dark for me to see anything. You can't see it. Tuh. You need new glasses. Come here. Mashida walks toward the bushes as I fall from behind. With my bright flashlight in hand, we cross the spacious open area. If Kakuri was actually here, we'd be perfect targets. Just thinking about that sends chills down my spine. Look. There it is. Okay, that is a lot of that mushroom. The red figure laying in the inner area. Hang on a second. Those are clumps of red plants that are in the shape of a human. Still, this doesn't explain anything about the shrine. We better take a closer look. The mushrooms growing here are thin red filaments. They look similar to the red mushrooms inside the petri dish. This has gotta be Fox Lakata. I don't get it. Why have they clustered in such a strange shape? I take the small shell from my bag. My guts tell me something's buried here. That's enough motivation to start thrusting the shovel into the earth. My shovel hit something hard. Being careful not to break whatever it is, I try and excavate the dirt around it. Before long, the object becomes visible. They're old human bones. These bones are clad with tattered clothes. Dirt has worked its way through the fiber now. The leaves used to be white. Who the hell is this poor sod? I don't know, but... The white clothes make me think that it could be Mr. Kakuri from the rumors. Abe said Kakuri is the spirit of a priest. This guy here, that priest. We may find out once we get a better look at the skeleton. I crouch next to the corpse and inspect it. From the bone structure, it appears these bones belong to a man. However, they don't really have any special identifying feature that would help us, like a missing finger or something. At this time of night, we'd be hard pressed to cross check his teeth against dental records, too. Making Maris worse, other than the shreds of the formerly white clothing, there are no belongings to be found. The fact that his body is buried here might indicate that he was murdered. If so, then his belongings might have been stolen at that time. Who are you? Words full of anxiety and confusion tumble from my mouth. Ugh. Demons of the old school, the dead fox god that looks alive inside the stomach. Da. What was that? A man's voice suddenly echoes from my mind, as if he's trying to answer my question. I believe these are murmurs of his deep resentment. If you listen too carefully, you may get overwhelmed by the regrets of the deceased. We can't stay here any longer, it's dangerous. Let's go, Mashita. I don't think we've got any useful information here. Nothing. Really. Shit. Suddenly, the sound of a gunshot rings out and reverberates through the shrine grounds. That's... You look like the skeleton... ...of a dead clown with a shotgun. It's got something resembling a hunting rifle in its hands. Is that... Mr. Kokuri? There's the mask, it's a skull. Mr. Kakuri disappeared. Whoa! Another gunshot rings out and the bullet hits the ground near our feet, freeing us with dirt. This is bad. That thing does real damage. And he's trying to shoot us with it. Hey, Yashiki! Don't go out there like that! You're wide open! Just saying that Mashita hides behind a nearby tree. I do the same, I hunger down behind a different tree. The bullet hits somewhere completely off target. The bullet hits a spot near the lantern. <sighs> this guy's obviously an amateur. I think he's using a hunting rifle. But you can see the grouping of the shots is very loose. Either that gun's old and has been cleaned, or he's just a poor marksman that keeps missing the target. 
I think as long as we keep a good distance from him, the bullets won't hit us. True. But we shouldn't be careless. He only needs one lucky shot to kill us. What should we do then? I can't see him anywhere. We can't just sit here and wait for him. We'll be dead meat once he gets close enough. Everything is certainly treading very badly for us. If we try to make a mad dash for it, the road ahead is straight and narrow. Even a bad shooter with a bad gun is going to be able to hit their target eventually in this kind of situation. What should we do then? We really can't make a move so long as we don't know where Kukuri is. Hold on, we can't see him right now. I feel like I remember something, but I'm not too sure. You can't think there must be clues somewhere. Eat some of the mushrooms. I opened the petri dish and decided to eat some of the mushrooms that grow on the centipede. Ah. Ah, pathetic. It was one thing to think about doing, but now that I have to go through it, I can bring, can't bring myself to eat it. We've been having bad luck on these. I put one of the mushrooms sticking out of the insect's body and teared off a force. Then with steely determination, I swallow it down. That hurt. I feel my body getting warm like I just drank a mug of hot water. My heart is being so fast my vision starts to blur. This is probably the effect of a fox legata. Hey, you alright, Yashiki? Yeah, I think so. Once my heartbeat returns to normal, I slowly stabilize. The vision stops going blurry and I'm no longer in a daze. Then a mysterious figure appears before my eyes. He's there. I can see Kokuri. Looks like this is the right choice. Kokuri hasn't moved an inch. Rest assured he hasn't come any closer. Wait, what? You can see Kokuri. Yeah, thanks to the Red Demon. Eat Crimson Devil to see the invisible Kukuri. The female doll mentioned it before. Calling this hooligan's Kukuri aims his gun in our direction. The bullet hits the tree we're hiding behind. His accuracy's improved. We're pinned down now. Well, if it's for certain, we can't escape right now. We need to find some way to fight back. Since Basha can't see Kakuri, the only one who can find him is me. There's not much I can do to fight back. I gotta give it my all. Yosh. Yosh. I open the suspicious paper bag and take out the gun inside. After all, I'm a complete novice. I don't have any confidence in my ability to shoot a gun. Mashita, you do something to distract the crew for a couple seconds. Huh. I figured you were going to ask something like that. I'll do something about it. Believing Mashita's tactics, I poke my head out and ready my gun. Yeah, we keep failing recently. Mashita leaves his cover and tries to ready his gun, except Mashita panics under pressure and drops his gun into the ground. Masha leaves his cover and shoots into the open space. Kukuri turns towards Mashita. Great job, Mashita. I take him at Kukuri who has now stopped moving and breathe deeply and come pull the trigger. Kukuri lets on an eerie howl. 
Did you get him, Ashashiki? I think I hit him. Although I guess it's more like my bullet just passed through his body. Well, he's a spirit after all. You could defeat them with guns, no one would call me to investigate. They just get the military. Kukuri screams in anger and fires his gun. He then begins to approach us slowly. Shit, it's getting closer. So he just pissed him off. I want to believe this is the right choice. Kukuri's breathing hard, he seems angry. The closer he gets to us, the more in danger we are. That also makes it easier to shoot him now. Will that really help us? What are we gonna do? We're running out of time. Uh, I know that already. If we only want to deal with Kukri's shots, we'll be able to find an opening and escape. Our bullets don't work against Kukuri. We need to create an opening to survive. Rifle, because it's the only physical thing. Sorry, but can you become, be my decoy once more, Mashita? Fine! First thing Mashita, I peek my head out of the cover and ready my gun. Yeah, we've literally lost every, like, roll. It's like, all the last ones. The secondary rolls don't count because it boosts chances to 9 It basically makes it guaranteed. Mashita does the same as far as a shot in the open space. Kukuri turns towards Mashita. Good job, Mashita. I take him at Kukuri has now stopped moving. He deeply and calmly pulled the trigger. Kukuri lets on an eerie howl. Nice, that definitely hit. I saw for a split second. Your shot hit his rifle. Kukuri sounds frustrated and angry. Something might have happened to his rifle. Do I attack him his rifle? It's now or never. Kukuri can't shoot us. Let's go, Mashita. I know. Now you need to tell me. Once we reach a path, we beat feet and don't slow down. Because like this is the right choice. Mashita and I race out as are as fast as we can. We're running straight for the exit. There's no guarantee that Mr. Kokuri will let us go even when we escape the forest. Like slipping off Kashima, he can probably follow us now that he's set his sights on us. We'll have to be careful everywhere going forward. Even so, our only choice right now is to run for our lives. Even hell is going to be hot on our heels wherever we go. The only goal is survival, and I'm sure that Mashita feels the same. It's the exit, Yashiki. Is he still chasing us? He is not. Looks like we've survived the hunt for now. For fact's sake, you barely escaped that bastard. You better stay out of this goddamn forest for now. Unless you feel like being target practice. Masha looks exhausted, and I'm sure I do as well. Let's take this opportunity to head to the infirmary and sort out everything we've just learned. A sigh of relief escapes my lips the moment we step inside the infirmary. I'm lucky that I'm seeing these walls again. That's not an exaggeration in the slightest. Time to tell Yasuoka and the Everest what happened in the forest. Welcome back. Glad to see you're both safe. We got shot at. 
Yasuoka and Hiro are the only people inside the infirmary. Where's Maruhashi? Oh, she went to the restroom. She's dead! Alone? She's aware of the danger that Shrine poses now. And she's not headed into the forest. She should be fine. Kakuri's not the only threat here, though. The Depart is running around the school as well. Although the Depart only kills her target after issuing a notice, so Maruhashi should be fine. Good thing she's not here, then. I'll give you a quick summary of what happened before she returns. There are things I don't want her to hear. I fill them in on what happened in the forest. I see. So Kakuta is... It's painful to know that a young life has been lost like that. But does that mean Kakuta was hooligan? More or less. Kakuta stole a document about Fox Akata, so he must have known something about it. Though I find it hard to imagine that he was acting on his own. Fox Akata is a strong illusion, and so it wouldn't surprise me if our people were doing something with it. A strong illusion, eh? I like to study it at the Institute. It may be a new kind of alkaloid. Very intriguing. Can you give me some of those Fox Lakata to research once we wrap the sophistication? Uh. Cut the crap, hero. This thing needs to be in the hands of the government. I'm gonna submit this shit to my friend at the DEA. I'm not having it any other way. Got it? Jeez, you're no fun. Hey, you're live. I'm back. Oh, you're here already. Hey, you better fill me in too. Don't leave me out of everything. Fine. Leaving out the bits about Kakuta's death, I tell her what happened in the forest. I concoct a story and say that I found the paper in the phone lying on the ground. Heh. So Kakuta was in the forest. How was he there, though? Don't know. I think he got a call. Maybe his phone could tell us something? Unfortunately, it's broken. I've tried pressing the button, but... Let me take a look. Mirage starts touching the phone screen like it's our own phone. Psst, not broken. The battery's just dead. Hey, one with a phone should be able to realize this. Jeez, how bad of tech stuff are you, Grandpa? Uh, sorry. You got me there. I have a charger that'll work with this phone at home. Maybe we should try and charge it, and then see if we can get something out of it. My home's not far from here. This phone's going to be pretty useless to us with a dead battery. Let's take her up on her offer. Alright, I'll be right back. I wonder if something sus is going to happen. Murahashi quickly exits the infirmary. What should we do now? Should we wait until that kid calls us? I object to that course of action. We should resume the investigation. It's for your sake as well, Yashiki. Hmm? What do you mean by that, Yasuoka? I can tell. You're being targeted by a spirit. Excuse me. Sooner or later, that spirit will find its way to you. If that happens while you're unprepared, you'll meet the same fate as Kakuda. Ah, for frack's sake, why is everything so... As a renowned fortune teller and spiritualist, Yasuoka's words carry a lot of weight. I thought maybe the clock had stopped with Kakuda's death, and we have a little more time before there was another target. But it turns out the clock is still ticking. It's counting down for me. But what should we do now? We still don't know who exactly Kokuri is, right? That's something we can research. I have an idea. We remember the case from Kakuto's document. Let's look at that murder of mother and child at Lake S. That's been stuck in my head. How are we going to investigate that? Have Nakabatsu look it up on the internet for us. He should at least be able to pull up a general summary from somewhere. And by that, I mean you go call him up. 
Wait, why do I have to do it? You know how to use a phone, just call him yourself. Nah, I don't really like talking to him. We're not really on the same wavelength, Sonic. Alright, Shadow, fine. <laughs> so that's your issue. I guess you can't expect a nice otaku and a hard-boiled ex-detective to get along. Looks like I'm going to have to be the one to call Ita. Hello, Yashiki. What do you want me to look up? Can you look up for any information you can find on about the murder of a mother and child at Lake S? It may be connected to our investigation. Jeez, a mother and child being murdered? That sounds awful. I'll try searching. Found something. Ten years ago, a mother and child were beaten to death by a group of delinquents. I'll show the details now. It's pretty long, so you should probably start taking notes. Now, I wonder... If Marashi's still a target, okay. If her brother was the one who did this. I will put a pen to write down everything Ata says about the murder. Murder of the Marvel Lake Child Lake S. Ten years ago at Lake S in a city, a family who went camping was attacked by a group of young men. Of Izumi Kiriyuhara and her daughter Kozoe Kiyuhara were being a death. The father of Masaki Kiyuhara was greatly injured but survived. He was hospitalized for three months. Masaki Kiyuhara was a teacher at a school in H City, not far from S City. He continued to work there after the incident, but later disappeared. Worked here. The crime was committed by eight juveniles, all between the ages of 16 and 19. At the time of the crime, they were under the influence of the mind-altering substances. Due to their ages, names of perpetrators were not disclosed. The narcotic they were taking at the time was believed to be some new type of psychedelic mushroom. Of the eight juveniles who arrested K, who was alleged that a drug dealer was released due to insufficient evidence. That's horrible. Those violent punks are scarier than spirits. It's true. Aza might have a point there. Spirits who curse humans are pretty frightening, but humans are responsible for creating spirits in the first place. The malicious actions of people cause grudges, and grudges create spirits. It's a chain of hatred, one that begins with humans. And thus begins the plot of Jujutsu Kaisen. By the way, Yashiki, I need to get going soon. Oh, you can leave the mansion if you want. Thanks for your help today, Eita. No problem at all. Talk to you soon, Yashiki. How'd it go, Yashiki? Eita had a lot to share. I show the details of the murder of the other three. I see. The wonder was sticking in my hand. Did you work in that case, Mashida? Come on, man. Use your brains just a little bit. That case is ten years old. I wasn't on the force yet. But now I recall my mentor was the one who told me about. Nakamatsu pretty much covered the whole thing. Though, so I don't have any additional info to add. Do you think the mushrooms for that case were Fox Lakata? This case is just full of mushrooms, eh? Can't argue with that. A curse involving mushrooms growing from her body. Kakura being turned into mushrooms. The fox Lakata and the dead centipede in the petri dish. And now we've learned about the tragedy caused by fox Lakata ten years ago. I'm really- I'm getting really tired of saying that word. Everything's connected to mushrooms. It's one of those words that's not hard on itself. But if you keep saying it after you've been recording for hours, non-stop vocals, it starts to add up. Boy K, the one who wasn't prosecuted. Could have been Kakuda. God damn it, I just told you. That case is ten years old. There's no way Kakuda was involved back then. Well, it's pretty unlikely for him to have been directly involved. But he knew about Fox Lakata. He reacted to the Petri dish and he even hid the documents. I figured it would tie itself up nicely if he turned out to be a mushroom dealer. I imagine we don't have enough information yet, however... The key to discovering Mr. Kokuri's identity is likely a link between the past and the present cases. Or so I believe. Guess that's all we're gonna get out of this deduction session. 
What we need now is some solid evidence. Let's continue the investigation at Yashiki. We don't know where to start, though. We probably won't find anything in the forest with a shrine in the corridor. Hmm. I have a place in mind. For real. I got some information in the forest that'll lead to us, us to our next spot. Right, the voice I heard when I inspecting the bones. Rattle me bones! Deep inside the old school, dead fox cut looks alive inside the stomach. That voice told me to go investigate somewhere. Maybe adding to the location they mentioned will help us identify that corpse. And if we can learn about the person who became Mr. Kokuri, we can start devising a plan of attack. Which sounds great, except we're running low on time. Should we really just trust something that I heard from a mysterious voice, when so much is at stake? Having trouble making a decision. When you're running out of time, you need to make a tough choice. Just trust your instinct and hope for the best. You know what's most important when dealing with spirits? Courage and conviction. Thanks for the reminder. I'll go with my gut and act on the information the voice gave me. Let's search for the dead fox god that looks alive in the depths of the old school. So this is the old building you all have been going on and on about, huh? Place looks downright condemned. But on uh, that, this is right in the middle of an active campus. Well, they don't really use it anymore, so they've been neglecting it quite a bit. Not used anymore, huh? When you put it like that, it makes me wonder if this place was still used ten years ago. Ten years ago. On the Lake Esmerner. The victim's husband was a teacher. There was a chance that he worked here. Bet you're thinking the same thing. Otherwise, why would you come here, right? There's a chance the victim's husband used to be a teacher at Konehar Academy. But I chose to come to this place because that voice told me to. The old school must refer to the old building. Where is the dead fox cut that looks alive, then? Where in the school might students study living things? Was that the Depart's voice again? Tuh. The heck is this place? My body feels heavy. We better find the root of the curse. Usually it's like, at the end. Numerous dead insects were lying inside the dusty sink. The cursed tooth was rolling around. Found it. This cursed tooth is the cause of all this. Break that thing now. Yeah, okay. I reach my hand to the sink and pick up the tooth. <sighs> this is bad. I'm getting dizzy. Shut! My hand slipped and the tooth falls. It shouldn't be that far away. I've got to find it fast. We spell rolling the floor. I put my light toward it, and fortunately, it is the cursed tooth I was looking for. Phew, found it. Good, that thing didn't go under the desk. Yeah, definitely. Raising my foot, I crushed the tooth. The cursed tooth shares into pieces. My body feels much lighter now. The curse-like phenomenon of plaguing this place has subsided. Hmm. There's a large shelf against the wall. Seems like it was used to store lab equipment in the past. There doesn't seem to be anything behind the dirty glass door. Wait, I take that back. Something sparkles when I put my flashlight inside. There's a small key inside the shelf. 
He has no tag attached to it. What's this key for? Hello. There's your fox. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. A pile of mold infested cardboard boxes. Machida, help me examine all these boxes. Tch, what a pain in the ass. I'll inspect the boxes on the left side. You take the two boxes on the right. I pick up the pile of boxes and put them down. The heavy box is filled of old books and prints. I rummage through them, but I don't find anything worth noting. Uh, this one. Did you find something? Look at this, Yashiki. The box Mashita is gesturing at is filled with old lab equipment. I find something small hiding among the test tubes and beakers. Tooth. I pick it up. It's an eerie tooth. Paul's liquid are lined up on the shelf. That liquid seems like formalin to me. Botanical specimens are floating inside the bottles. There's something behind the bottles, Yashiki. Petri dishes are piled up along the back of the shelf. Inside the dishes are desiccated flowers and leaves, as well as dried moss. Guess I'm a some pretty active plant collector in the past. If these plants are endemic species from fox forest, the person who collected them might be the author of that research journal. That means... This dish used to be here, too. I see. But I don't get how the dish got from here, to the shrine. I don't know either. It might be a spiritual phenomenon. I gotta say this little dish has been an invaluable help in this case. I feel like my steps in this investigation are being choreographed by someone else. An old anatomical model covered in dust. It's in such bad shape that it seems shockingly mundane. What a poor fate for this model, if you think about it. Their skin is peeled off, their organs unexposed, and then they end up neglected like this. Yush. Yush. I find an old steel cabinet. There's something behind the glass door. Let's get a closer look. I peer through the dusty glass. It's a dissection scalpel that was probably used for experiments. The camera door is locked, though. I can't open it. I insert the small key into the keyhole. The door opens with a delightfully crisp clack. I open the door and find a dissection scalpel inside. Despite all the dust, the scalpel isn't that rusty. It can probably still cut things. There's a stuffed fox specimen on the shelf. A fox god. We definitely need to inspect this closely. No, just use this. Deep inside the old school, a dead fox god that looks alive. That must be referring to this fox. Hey, check out what's inside its stomach. Maybe whatever secret inside this fox's stomach can shine a light on Mr. Kukuri's identity. I've got a feeling something will happen once I figure out what secret it is. If there are things that we haven't done yet, we better finish them before doing this. So we cut open the stuffed fox's stomach. I already went back and used the last of my souls. I get the dirty scalp from my bag and approach the stuffed fox. I press the tip of the scalpel to the fox's belly. I then I slice it open. The fox's stomach is gaping. Yikes. A swarm of tiny bugs pour out of the fox's stomach. Given how old the fox is, I should have expected something like this. But even still, I can't help being disgusted. Brushing away the bugs, I stick my hand inside. The stomach cavity. Huh? This is... What did you find? This thing. I show Hero the plastic square I found. Heh. <laughs> Isn't that a floppy disk? You know what this is, right, Yashiki? Uh, I'm just asking to be sure. It's the thing you use to save data on a computer, isn't it? 
Correct. If we have a computer with a floppy drive, we should be able to see the data on this disk. Computer, huh? Now that I think about it, I remember seeing a laptop in the faculty room. You better hurry if you have an idea where one is. We need to gather as much information as possible before Mr. Kukuri shows up. This is... The Departed. They're there. Hero's voice starts to crack due to fear. No matter how much I try to prepare myself, I always freeze up before the Departed. I can't even speak, much less move. My dear husband. Kokuri resentment killed Hooligan. My dear husband. Yep. You are next. He's already here. Should you survive, you will become my real husband. You say that every time. But you can't save this soul as you are now. You will die here. Tonight. The part is gone. What do they mean? I can't save the soul. Hey, Yashiki. Did they say something? Yeah. I tell Hiro what the Depart just told me. I don't get it. By he is coming, do they mean? Exactly. We can't run from here until we deal with Mr. Kokuri. Do you really think we're ready to do that? They said that you couldn't save the soul now, right? Oh, don't worry about that part yet. The current me can't save the spirit's soul. This is just another hunch, but... It's because I'm lacking the key information I need. If that's the case, then there's no way I can save the spirit. What do I still need? This floppy disk must be the key. I need to see what's on it immediately. It'll be alright, right? They're just spouting a bunch of nonsense that you worked up. Hero raises her voice frantically. I don't have a response for right now. What should I do? Labeling us hooligans, Kokuri crushed us and tried to kill us. Before confronting him, we need to coordinate all the information we have, or else we won't stand a chance. The hooligans, Fox Forest, and Lock Fox Lacan must be linked to the Lake S incident. We walk toward the door trying to leave the science room. However... I'm curious if we could look like the thing we saw before or what. Yeah, it's the same thing. Spooky skeleton man with a shotgun. Yeah, the, the monsters in general this time are not as freaky looking. I'm here the vision of a decaying body covered in mushrooms wearing a mask resembling a beast skull. Maybe the de final departed form is going to be really freaky. A hideous looking Kokuri is standing right before my eyes. What should we do? I can't guarantee that we're fully prepared to fight Kokuri. I want to run, but the door is blocked and we don't have another way out. What should we do then? At that moment, Kukuri lets out a terrifying scream. My entire body is racked with crippling pain. Oh my god! What is this pain? What are those, mushrooms? I hear the unpleasant sound of something growing for the second time. Hero screams, clutching their neck and crouching down. Ah, my neck! Looks like mushrooms have started invading Hero's body as well. 
Which reminds me, this is the same mushroom curse that afflicted Maruhashi. So then... If the mushrooms infest our whole bodies, what awaits us is death. Kakuri simply stares at us in silence. Is he trying to kill us with a curse? He's not showing any sense of reading his gun. Now I'm going to say one little thing, because I think what's their name Hero is going to be the theoretical one that can die in this chapter. Is that Hero has only met the three girls. The principal has not been here. And we always know that person gets killed if someone has met these characters. What does he want to do? Who? Does he want us to say our names or what? Masaki. Because I know I said like, oh, it's the uh, teacher. Yes, well, he hunts delinquents. Information regarding Lake Essendon is mentioned in the Fox Hakata note. I've also obtained the name of the victims thanks to Eita. He's known as the Foundation, I tell Hiro whose name we should give to Kakuri. Kakuri! Your name is probably Masaki Kiyohara! Kakuri seems to accept this answer. Oh, is he responding to us? Kakuri stays still for a moment. I guess he really is Kiyuhara. Assuming the science teacher who was investigating Apocalypse was a victim of the Lake S incident, and that the mushrooms and the culprits behind the incident were hooligans, it all aligns with Kakuri's fixations. Therefore, the victim of that incident, Kiyuhara, is a natural choice to be Kakuri. Looks like this is the right choice. Kakuri looks at us in silence. What's that question just now? What does he want to do? No idea. It feels like he's testing us right now. Kakuri suddenly lets out a shriek. God, you look like a Spongebob character, I swear to god. What does that mean? Like, they gave him all googly eyes. This mask then falls off revealing a hideous decaying face. Like, it literally looks hilarious. Kakuri glares at us and growls. I feel dizzy and my arm is hurting really bad. If they didn't do the clown shape, it'd be a little better. No clown shape and no googly eyes. Shit, it's messing my arm now. Oh no, this is bad. He's totally gonna kill us. We have no idea what Kakuri's real intention is. We're gonna be killed at this rate. What should we do? Worst. Ghoul again. Because he wants to give him a name again. I get the feeling that a wrong answer here is going to get us killed. We didn't really think this is over. Student K. Who is Student K then? You will try to recall the name of the hooligan who was involved with the fox Lakata inside this petri dish. Kakuri, the one you hate is Student K. Kakuri's breath is going to become more shallow. He seems satisfied with the answer. Assuming Kakuri is Kiyohara, he lost his family to a bunch of delinquents in the Lake S incident. The culprits were under the influence of fox Lakata, which is sold by Student K. Making things worse, Student K wasn't arrested. He's basically the cause of all Kakuri's problems. Looks like this is the right choice. Kakuri lets out an eerie howl. Then he slowly vanishes into thin air. I'm still wondering if it's Mitsuhara somehow. Not her herself, but like her older brother maybe. In a flash, the pain disappears as quickly as it came. The strange objects covering my head and arm have also disappeared. 
Is it over? <laughs> what was that sound? But hearing that eerie scream, I've started to feel dizzy. Is your career attacking us again, Yashiki? No, it just means you have to do something extra for the good and then forward. What's happening? The courier should have disappeared. Why is he here again? Is he smiling? Or is he suffering? My dizziness is getting worse. What's wrong, Yashiki? Hero's scream sounds so distant. My consciousness is fading as the current darkness descends upon me. Right, this voice is... It is the departed. I hear a sound. The same disgusting sound as before. Is Kuri being devoured? But why? Dear husband, you were supposed to die here, but you resisted fate, stood against fear. Now I am convinced you are my real husband. Okay. Take a look. <laughs> Very pretty. Before my eyes, the part transforms. Their head splits open, revealing their new form, one more even hideous than the last. Their souls combine, take off my old clothes, and put on new clothes. I want to be beautiful, more beautiful than others. We will exchange vows later. Please wait, dear husband. Is he feeding like things, the rest of the body coming out? Uh, what the hell? <laughs> Ack. I'm stricken with a massive headache and my feet falter beneath me. What in the world is happening? What is that thing? The lights are supposed to be off, yet they emit a dim light. A red light. Ugh. Hero has collapsed to the ground. Well, Hero has lost consciousness. There aren't any physical injuries that I can find. Hey, Hero! Are you okay? I grab Hero by the shoulders and give a firm shake. Uh, Yashiki. I help Hero off the floor. Thank you. What's that light? Is this Mr. Kokuri's doing? I have no idea. Hero, can you recall anything? Me? Um... I can't remember a thing. I lost consciousness the moment Mr. Kokuri started behaving oddly. That reminds me, where is Mr. Kokuri? He's not here. Did you do something to him? No. The one who killed Mr. Kokuri is... <laughs> Weird. The sight I witnessed when I was on the brink of fainting. The departed devoured Mr. Kukuri. And then their body underwent a horrible transformation. What's wrong? No, it's nothing. I don't really know anything either. I'm still coming to my senses too. I doubt that telling Hiro about that bizarre scene is going to clear anything up. Let's return to the infirmary. Maybe Yasuoka can give me some answers. Let's go, Hiro.
Go of us leave the science room. Whoa, even the hallway's red now. This is going on over the entirety of the old building. Let's head back to the new building before anything else bad happens. I can feel someone's gaze on me. I'm getting deja vu for some reason. A doll? Squeak. You look... prettier. The female doll standing in darkness. Her damaged face has been fixed. How can that be? Why did her appearance change in addition to the departed's? They're linked. I have to share it. The words are clearer than before. Kakuri resentment, still lingering. Kakuri, not forgive those possessed by demons. Return red demons where they belong. Okay, that's the ending trigger. The female doll then disappears into the darkness. Kakuri's resentment is still lingering. I can't immediately refute that. If Mr. Kakuri had been devoured by the Depart before his soul was saved, perhaps a lingering resentment will still bear its fangs at living beings. If that's true, then its target is still. Hero. Because she was there when we, uh, first opened the shrine. Hey, Yashiki! Why'd you just stop all of a sudden? A new building is just right ahead. Uh, okay. There's something. There's still something I can do to save Mr. Kakuri. I wonder what she means by return the red demons to where they belong. Oh, file. <laughs> Mysterious ball-jointed doll clad in bright red dress. She initially was damaged beyond repair, but once the depart began devouring spirits, the cracks in her face were mended. After she gained the ability to speak, she provided key device to the protagonist. So I think Saki is gonna live, because all pages unlocked. I just want just want to point that out. No way! What a nerf is this? Toilets are flushing, the piano is playing. Who'd have thought the paranormal phenomena would occur in the new building as well? This is the first time I've witnessed a spirit operating as strong as brazenly as this. Don't tell me the special buildings also. Hurry up, Yashiki! building as peaceful as ever. The lights haven't turned red like the ones in the other buildings. Ryu, we should be safer now. What was that phenomena anyway? I've got an idea though, it's just a hunch. Both the female doll and Kona Harakami changed once the part transformed. That can't be mere coincidence. Oh, that's right. We've got to check out the floppy disk before going to Yasuoka. We don't know what mis that Mr. Kakuri has gone for good. So I think I'll only from what we can just in case. You have a point. We still do have some unsolved mysteries regarding Mr. Kokuri. Not to mention that the doll also said his resentment is still lingering. Now if that's true, our lives will be at risk until that resentment has been pl placated. All the stuff concerning the Departed and the Red Lights are certainly worrisome. We better focus on Mr. Kokuri as the imminent threat. Got it. Let's go to the faculty room. The faculty room is empty at this time of night. I need to find that laptop quickly. It's literally right there. There's a laptop on the desk. We can check the data on the floppy disk with this. You do the work, hero. This is my cup of tea. Alright, I got it.
Hero turns on the laptop and then inserts the floppy disk. I see. They're the documents from 10 years ago. These files predate mob operating systems with a GUI. These go back to the days of command lines. The files themselves should be still be readable by the modern world processing software. I hope. Hero might as well be speaking as a foreign language. I don't understand a thing they said. After a while, some text finally appears on the screen. This is... I'm running this here just in case. I summon K to the forest. K is Mitsuru Kuramine. He's a hooligan. He'll probably bring his gang of thugs with him. So I decided to bring my hunting rifle. I become a demon both physically and mentally. The next fox demon of this cursed forest. I'll terrorize him and kill every single one of them. Even if I die or sacrifice my soul, I shall destroy my enemies. Basaki Kiyuhara. This is pretty much a farewell note. And this Masaki Kiyohara person... He's probably our Mr. Kokuri. And in Kiyohara's note to know every information we have thus far, we can see the whole story. Ten years ago, Kiyohara's wife and child were murdered by delinquents at Lake S. The boys were junkies addicted to Fox Lakata. And the ones who sold them was Hooligan, K. K was Kurumine, a delinquent from Konehara Academy. After learning his identity, Kiyohara summoned Kurumine and his friends to the forest with the intention of getting revenge. And at that moment, he became the fox demon of the cursed forest. Wearing white clothing complete with a fox mask, he copied out Mr. Kokuri looked. He probably saw something of himself in the spirit who killed hooligans at disgrace or shrine. However, he never got his revenge. Kurumine and his friends killed him and buried him in the forest. Damn, that skeletal corpse was Kiyohara. His resentment still lingered on even after his death. Plus his regret became a spirit. Oddly enough, a spirit that looked like Mr. Kakuri. And that is how his revenge began claiming hooligans addicted to Fox Lakata. One of them being Kakura. I guess we've learned enough. Let's report to Siyasoko and the others in the infirmary. We return to the grounds of the shrine once again. Hey, why have we come here? I have something to tell Mr. Kokuri. Huh? Just wait here, hero. I head toward the inner area of the grounds by myself. Mr. Kokuri's, I mean, Masaki Kiyohara's corpse is resting there. A man whose life and family were ruined by Fox Lakata. They had insult to moral injury. These mushrooms are growing on his corpse, as if mocking his tragedy. Return the red demons to where they belong. If red demons are referring to Fox Lakata, there's no other place they belong more than right here. Take a look at this, Kiyohara. I take the creepy petri dish from my bag. And then I throw it into the nearby bush. That should be enough, right? What did you do? I threw out the petri dish. Huh? But why? Fox Akata wasn't supposed to be taken outside this forest. This is what Mr. Kokuri wants. But Fox Akata is such an amazing plant. If we re just research it, we might be able to develop new met- Spirits don't really accept that kind of nuance. Mr. Kokuri reveals everyone who takes Fox Akata from the forest as hooligans. You know how all those hooligans met their ends, right? If you're prepared for the potential consequences, it's all yours. <laughs> Hero's complexion turns a paler shade of white. With her crippling fear of spirits, that should give her more than enough reason to change her mind. Fine, fine, I get it. Damn it, that's such a massive disappointment. I've been thinking about getting those mushrooms back to the lab ever since we found them. You would have died. You heard that, Kiyohara? I'll report your case to the cops once everything's settled. So you should just rest peacefully until then. Welcome back, you two. Mind telling us what happened out there? And tell them all the events that have happened up to this point. 
including the moment when the departed devoured Mr. Kokuri and transformed. A sight that only I could see. A sight I wish was merely a hallucination. What the? A spirit transformed after devouring another spirit? I've never heard of such a thing before. What a monster. It doesn't make any sense! Don't scare me like that! The three Mark Bears all take this news differently. Shocked and confused. Honestly, I feel all their emotions. What if this transformation made them stronger? That explained the red lights from earlier. Does that mean things have taken a turn for the worse? Most likely. I wonder what they're planning next now that they've gained power and transformed. More terrifying things may be in store ahead. Awful. A heavy silence all falls over the infirmary. The depart has grown stronger. There's nothing we can do about it. Our sense of fear grows alongside the sense of powerlessness that we feel. The phone on desk is ringing. I should answer it. Hello? Hello, Maruashi. I've charged Kakuda's phone. Have you checked what's on it? Of course. I'll tell you what it says now, so you better take notes. I prefer to write down the contents of Kakuta's phone as Marashi relays it to me. There's a series message from MK. MK had trusted Kakuta to manage the fox that caught in the forest, but when their secret was about to be exposed, he told Kakuta to dispose of them. He framed to tell the world about Kakuta's assault case of Kakuta betrayed him. Kakuta reluctantly agreed to help. MK didn't send any messages after for two weeks, till today after school when Kakuta got two new messages from him. However, the text was too crabble to decipher. MK. I recall the time I saw Kakuta in that storage room. He was murmuring something about looking at his phone. Oh, someone, I have to go. Or else I'll be killed. MK. It's pretty clear he was acting under MK's direction. A Kakuta is a pretty messed up kid for someone who's a disappearing mini member. Kakuta didn't have anything to do with the Lake S incident. However, he got himself mixed up with Fox Akata because of MK's blackmail. And that's how he met his end. MK is the person who did the uh, murder. Mr. Kakuri, Kiyohara won't forgive anyone who addicted to Fox Akata. Thanks, Marashi. I was just repaying my debt since I caused you trouble before, alright? I'm hanging up now. Say hi to Miss Yasuoka for me. It was that girl, right? Did, what did she say? I told the others everything Maruhashi told me. Hey, MK, you think the, the person named K mentioned the Lake S murder case? I do. In Kiyohara's farewell note, K's full name was Mitsuru Kurumine, which means that K from the Lake S case has the initials MK. It's a pretty likely fit for him to be also be the MK who messaged him Kakuta. Kurumine continued to care for Fox Sakata secretly even after the LAKS incident. He exploited Kakuta's weakness and had him watch over his crops. What's with the frown, Mashida? I knew it. I know Mitsuru Kurumine. That jogged my memory. So? Is he a criminal you've arrested in the past? No, the opposite. Mitsuru Kurumine is a cop. He's a career bureaucrat in the Metrop Ooh! Metropolitan Police Department. His pops is the top brass, so he joined the cops because everyone expected he'd just fall in pops' footsteps. Wait a minute. He wasn't prosecuted, but Kurumini was still a suspect in the Lake S case. And he's still selling Fox Sakata. How is it possible that a fiend like that... ...can still be a cop? Cops are just people. They're saints and fiends in every group of people. Doctors, teachers, military, cops. And like I said earlier, his daddy's top brass. Sweeping a case like this under the rug will take some effort. The spops are so high up, he could definitely take care of it. Are you serious? So he escaped punishment for Lake S. He's blackmailing students to do his dirty work even now. What a shameless scumbag. That's exactly the kind of guy Kurumini is. A selfish asshole. Would see anything so long as he gave him the slightest benefit. 
In addition, Kiyohara's spirit is unable to find peace due to this miscreant. How unforgivable. Is there anything more we can do, Mashida? Nope. It's out of our hands. No matter what evidence we find, we'll never be able to take him, take him to trial. What do you mean by that? Kuramini is already dead. What? Then who was the phone? I remember reading about it in the newspaper about half a month ago. He died while relaxing at the lake. Accidental death, they say. And that lake he was relaxing at. You guessed it. Lake S. <laughs> the mom and the kid took care of you. It's like a it's like a wrestling tag team here. What a coincidence. Or maybe it wasn't a coincidence at all. For an arrogant and talented man of power like Kuramine, the deceased must have seemed as powerless as the living. To him, spirits were just never made up construct like morals or dignity that he could disregard. That's why he could kill so easily. But for those like us, we know the grudges of the dead aren't just ghost stories. The deceased are not powerless. That concludes our investigation for the night. Now everything is cleared up. There are some mysteries that remain unsolved. But there's no one left who can resolve those mysteries. Both Kakura and Kuramine are dead. I'm glad at least someone survived. I started getting ready to leave school, but I'm still feeling uneasy for some reason. Welcome back, Yashiki. Did you lock the door? Yeah. Do they force you to work as a janitor, too? You're putting way too much effort into this. Hey, we can't let people loiter inside the school or the number of victims is going to increase. As soon as the words leave my mouth, I feel how empty they are. Hiro and Mashida are the only ones in the infirmary. There's no sign of Yasuoka. Where's Yasuoka? Is Yasuoka the one who can die? Huh. Okay. I called the taxi and sent her home. I mean, this is usually bedtime for geezers, right? She's way too energetic for her age. You're really rude, you know that? If I hear you're being charged with harassment, I'm totally going to believe you're guilty. I've never harassed anyone in my life. So we head home now, too? I'll drive you both to the station as thanks. Having lost both his wife and child in a brutal incident, Kyohara investigated things himself and found the true culprit, K, A.K. Kurumine. However, he couldn't get his revenge was beaten to death by some hooligans. His intense resentment turned him into the spirit of Kakuri. Using Kakuta's weakness, Kurumini ordered the boy to manage the fox Akata in the forest, a source of income for him. But was the MK who had been texting Kakuta really Kurumine? Even more unsettling, after the departure of our Kakuri, is it transformed? What is going on? After checking where we're at, the door is locked, we leave the special building. And then we head to the main gate. For now, there's nothing we can really do about the red lights in the school. If it's really a spirit's doing, everything should be back to normal once the sun rises. So if Yasuoka was the one that was supposed to die, and we don't know yet, um, that does mix some things up, because Yasuoka did not meet any of these students or faculty in the story. But they are a famous figure... So they would be on TV. By the way, Yashiki, you like my paper bag. You can keep it if you like it so much, though. You can take it. Why would I want such a dangerous thing anyway? I take the gun from the paper bag and hand it back to Mashita. What in the world are you doing now? I just want to go home already. We're just leaving. <laughs> My car slowly leaves the school and heads toward M Tower Station. They should be able to catch the last train. This takes me back. Say, Yashiki. Mashida murmurs in the passenger seat, eyes fixed on the scenery outside. I glance at him, indirectly telling him to continue. 
You must be tired. His complexion looks darker than usual. Kakuta went to the Fox Forest this evening. He got an order from MK. Kurumine. Yeah, he did. Don't you find that weird? Now that he mentioned it, something about that doesn't feel right. The thought gets stuck in my mind. What's wrong with it? So you picked out my two, huh? Of course. Kurmini died half a month ago. It's impossible he's in the one that sent that message. So there's a chance MK isn't Kurumine. The previous messages before Kurumine's death must be from him. But the message he got today was strange. Even the fact that the text was garbled. In the first place, how could Kakuta even read that message when it was garbled? It could have also just been, uh... Mr. Kakuri, MK, texting him like, Hey, come out so I can murder you, kid. Everything's just so confusing. Hey. Hiro is sitting in the back seat cuts in. Can you give it a rest already? This case solved. I feel sorry for Kakuta, but what's done is done. But... Let's be grateful that we managed to survive tonight. Just focus on what you have to do or else you'll go insane. Oh, Hiro. My job is dissecting animals, you see. There are times when I feel depressed after thinking about the value of life and the animals I've had to kill. I can't even pretend that all the testing I've done is for the pursuit of science and the betterment of society. I'm not good at fooling people, haha. <laughs> I take a glance at the rearview mirror. Her smile looks somewhat self-deprecating. You know why I can continue doing my job? Because I realize that's just how life works and I've got to do what I need to do. We're not gods. We're not rulers. We can't save everyone. We can't just change the world. But still. Oh really? Haha. <laughs> so you believe you can be a god, huh? That's a amusing level of delusion for someone who's your age. Hey, it's true. I'm the, uh, god of apparently attracting ghost women. <laughs> I drop Masha and the hero off at the Tim Tower Station. Then I drive on for the night, headed toward Kujo Mansion. As I arrive at the mansion, the phone rings. I can't even relax. Who's calling this late at night? Hello? It's Kinukawa. Sorry for calling so late. What's wrong? Um, I can't stop thinking of Mr. Kokuri's case. Are you alright? I survived at least. But Kakuta's dead. Huh? The Karate Man? Yeah, I failed again. I showed the night's events of Michio. I realized that I shouldn't talk about it with a student even though she's trying to help me. However, my mouth starts going before I can think about it. No more trouble to stop talking once I've started. Did we ever give her the number to the mansion, now that I'm thinking about it? Maybe I'm just too exhausted to care. Maybe we did. Oh. I see. I get why you're blaming yourself, but... It's not your fault. It's the Departed's. We need to put a stop to the Depart quickly. We'll help you figure out who it is. Why? Why are you still helping me even after everything's terrible you've gone through? Is it really just curiosity? At first, yeah, but now, I'm doing this because I don't want you to die. You saved our lives and you understand our curse. That made both of us so happy, because we didn't think we'd ever have the guts to tell anyone about it again. Michiho. Remember this, Mr. Yashiki. You're not just a teacher to both Hime and I. You're our precious teacher. Me, their precious teacher. I never expected anyone to call me that when I'd been told I'd have to fill in as a temporary teacher. I should feel some kind of pride over it but triggered a memory of something Mashida told me. But you do start looking at everyone around you as a potential suspect. Um, are you listening, Mr. Yashiki? Oh yeah. Sorry, I was spacing out a little bit. Because I'm just exhausted from tonight. See, I still think, like, she's just so obvious, so... Like, it can't be her, right? It's too obvious. It's gotta be like the teacher or something, the, uh... The one that's always, like, the one with the rabbit thing. Or it's a friend. But then she said, like, what would you do if, like, would you be able to kill your friend if she was a departed? So that makes that too obvious. 
At least the caveman is in there and we're out here. Well, that's natural. Sorry for taking your time. Have some rest. Good night. Suspect everyone, huh? That's tough to do. Once again, the depart could just be no one. The night goes on, yet I can't bring myself to go to sleep. I'm afraid to close my eyes. No, I'm afraid to even turn off the lights. My eyes flirt over the window, displaying the moonlit night outside, triggering a memory from early tonight. The departed was roaming about with their new body. I recall what they said, and now I'm convinced that you're my real husband. All these incidents must have been some sort of test to see if I'm worthy of being their husband. And it seems like those tests have ended tonight. The departed has acknowledged me as her real husband. The ending that the departed desires. I feel like the day is fast approaching when I'll be asked to exchange vows at the school grounds. All in and red. You mean tomorrow? Alright, let's get the bad end. Hero slips covered in an awkward smile. Something doesn't feel right. Wait a minute. We're done talking, Honda. That's quick, eh? What's wrong, Hero? Nothing. By the way, Yashiki, what was on his phone? Come on, tell us already. Sure. Tell us everything Mario actually told me. Maybe in the, um... Yeah, I think it's going to target her, because she's the type that's going to take that mushroom. I'm starting to get ready to leave for school, though I'm still feeling uneasy for some reason. Welcome back, Yashiki. Did you lock the door? Yeah. They forced you to work as a janitor, etc, etc. Etc, etc. Hiromashita are the only ones in the infirmary, and there's no sign of Yasuoka. Where's Yasuoka? Call the taxi center home. Okay, that's still the same. Same. Hmm. Checking whether or not the door is locked, there's a special building at the main gate. When does one of the characters die then? Because Yasuoka didn't make it back, so that means it has to be either Mashita or Hiro. Oh, Yashiki. Don't give it back. I think I'll keep it this present then, buddy. I'll knock it off, I was kidding. Just give it back already, unless you want to be locked up for violating the sword and firearms control law. Big talk from next cop. Come on, man. Yeah, five seconds. Fine. I just wanted to see what happens there. I take the gun from the bag and hand it back to Mashita. Was that weird look? I can't find it anywhere. The Petri dish. Huh? Where'd you last see it? The faculty room where I took out the floppy disk. Yeah, so if you don't give it away, Hero probably pockets it to take back to the pharmacy. That makes her a target. Now she's a hooligan. What in the world are you doing now? I just want to go home already. I can't find the Petri dish anywhere. Have you seen Hero? Why are you asking me? You probably forgot it somewhere. Just go look for it tomorrow. But I'm exhausted and I really don't want to search for anything. Just do it tomorrow, okay? Hiro isn't going to help, and I don't have the energy to persuade her. It's not just Hiro, either. Mashida and I are also exhausted. I mean, she's not dead yet, though. She's gonna be like... Is she, wait, wait, let's be like a drive-by? Ghost drive-by? He's just gonna appear in front of the car, like, blat. My car slowly leaves the school. It's gonna actually be kind of funny if that'd be the case. And heads toward Bam Tower Station. I'm gonna skip ahead a little... Hee <laughs> hee. I've nowhere I hear a laugh coming from the back seat. 
This case has already been resolved. Both of you are such worry words. You're gonna make yourselves go bald early. <laughs> Boy, you throw up a lot of death flags. <sighs> Look at you acting so carefree. The moment we leave the school, your laugh's so annoying. Shut your damn mouth. Ha <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't stop. <laughs> the laughter gets you more hysterical. That the ghost has already got her the mushrooms. Are you okay, Hero? <laughs> hey, hey, listen up. I looked at my phone and I got a message. <laughs> what? A message? Kill Hooligan. <laughs> wow. That's a lot worse than drive by. Hero! That moment, countless strange objects start covering Hero's face. They're mushrooms. This is Mr. Kukuri's curse. What the frack? I thought it was over already. What's happening to my face? That is happening to your face. Hero claws at her face over and over again. Blood is flowing from her skin. Calm down, Hero. The mushrooms covering Hero's face grow naturally bigger and bigger. Yeah! Until finally they explode. Fresh blood fills the interior of my car, dyeing my vision red. This was a rough one, because they died right in front of us, too. Slowly. The other one's like they were pretty much already dead by the time we got there. And it disappears in an instant. It vanishes along with Hero's corpse, leaving no trace of her behind. How did this happen? I can't believe this. Shad. What did we mess up? Our stunned silence fills the air for what feels like an eternity. Although in actuality, the silence only lasts for five minutes. Yashiki, look, this was in the back seat. It mushes his hands as Hero's phone and the petri dish. Except there's nothing inside, not the fox, the cotton, not even the dead centipede. Why is this petri dish here? You want my best guess? I'd say Hero stole it from you. Probably when you were on the call with Farahashi. I remember she was acting kind of strange. But why would she do that? Have you forgotten that research addict wanted to study those flocks Lakata? If she tried to ask to do it, I'd have conscious confiscated them. Hence she resorted to other measures. Oh, Mr. Kokuri despises any hooligans who want to get their hands on the flocks Lakata. That's why Hiro... Mr. Kokuri was devoured by the Departed. However, his grudge still lingers on. Because of that, Hiro was cursed and killed. Look at our phone, Yashiki. My eyes turn to the phone in front of me. A list of incoming messages appears on the screen. And then the most recent message is from... MK. See, I told you, it's Mr. Kakuri, because it's the same initial. MK's message is Garmon. I think Hiro was able to read it, though. Just like what happened with Kakura. Say Mashida. Who do you think is the MK that sent those messages to Kakuda and Hiro? You think it might be the late Kuramine? Ah, oh, come on, it's pretty obvious at this point. There's gotta be another MK. Another MK. Mr. Kakuri is Masaki Kiriyohara. His initials are also MK. Also, Mr. Kakuri could be abbreviated as MK. I dropped Mashid off at M Tower Station. Both of us just want to be alone now. Let's drive on through the night road heading toward Kujo Mansion. Grief and remorse fill my heart. I lost a friend. I survived at least. But Kakuta and Hiro are dead. Huh? The Karate Man? And that lady in white clothing, right? See? Yup. Hiro met the three girls. It's consistent so far. Yeah, I failed again. 
So that's it for this chapter of Death Mark 2. Uh, we are getting closer to the climax, although this game is fairly lengthy. There's still... I'm assuming the climaxes are pretty long, but I don't think we're necessarily any closer to solving the case. It's kind of like Mashita says, we've been so focused on solving the individual cases, we don't really make any headway on the main one, which is Departed. Aside from the fact that Tobarted uh, transformed into a person with very large fingers on their chest, with large nails. I'm, I'm kind of curious how that's going to turn out in the end. But yeah, anyway, so thank you all for watching this part. Stay tuned for the next one.